Alrighty, guys. Let's do this. So I'm just going to leave it as joypad only because I know that should work just fine. And we'll leave the rest. Let's do this. The story, characters, and events in this game are entirely fictional. Any similarities to actual people, places, and events are entirely coincidental. Let me know about the sound levels, too. Oh, that's awesome, Tony. I love how role-playing is so big online now. The story is dedicated to all those cyberpunks who fight against injustice and corruption every day. Is the game music way too loud? Let me turn that down real quick. June 6, 1996. A mysterious explosion destroys the Chernotin research facility near Moscow. Lucifer Alpha, a powerful biological weapon under secret development there, is released into the atmosphere, creating a deadly biohazard. Carried by the trade winds, Lucifer Alpha spreads throughout Eastern Europe and Eurasia, destroying 80% of the populace. Half of the world's people die. The greatest biohazard in history later becomes known simply as the catastrophe. We're going through a but biohazard at this time, right now. Who could have possibly imagined that the ultimate biohazard wouldn't occur for another half century? Fifty years later, mankind faces its greatest crisis the appearance of a mysterious android life form. Its purpose and origin are unknown. Is it a new form of weapon? Or perhaps an invasion from some other world? They appear during winter, killing humans and infiltrating society by taking the place of their victims. Winter. Employing an artificial skin, they can sweat and even bleed. Part organic, part machine, they're almost impossible to distinguish from those they kill. It's a Christmas game. <laughs> As they steal their victims' bodies in order to take their place, these mysterious invaders become known as Snatchers. Looks just like a Terminator. Love that. Okay, now that we get a break in the action in a second, I'll turn down the game just a little bit. I just didn't want to interrupt that cutscene. A neat title. I like that. <laughs> yeah, right, Tiny? That makes sense. They will sweat if they can mimic perfectly. Japan. Tokyo, right? I'm gonna guess Tokyo. Neo Kobe City. Never mind. That's way off. It is December, though. This is a totally a Christmas game. So jazzy. Kind of reminds me of the intro to Akira. Or Blade Runner. Tell me if you recognize any of these names. Jeff Lupitan as Gillian C. Lucy Childs as Gear. There is some Metal Gear references in this. This is before Metal Gear Solid. Random Hajile, Jim Parks. Benson Cunningham, played by Ray Van Steen. Jamie C. by Susan Melee. Mika Slayton by Kimberly Horn. Even way back then, Hideo Kojima wanted to do movies with it. Katrina Gibson, Lynn Usama. <laughs> this is awesome. Are those guys just having a knife fight in the background? And this is like so much more of a cinematic experience than you usually would get at this time. You know, we were used to games with like practically no story, you just jump right into the action. If you wanted to know the story, you'd have to look at the instruction manual. <laughs> What's funny is on my volume thing, the volume isn't that loud. But let me go ahead and try to turn this down a little bit. 
I can like see where the levels of the volume are, and it didn't seem like it was too bad. How's that? Might just be a retro game thing. Everything is just blasted to the max. This jazz is great. And that's the tricky part too about balancing video game audio is sometimes certain songs, intros are super loud. Kind of like commercials during like TV shows. And then the game actually gets pretty quiet. How was work? Everything okay? Mm. Gillian, what is it? What's wrong? Jamie, I've become a junker. A junker? Gillian, but why? Jamie, you know why. It's the only way we can regain our lost memories. Snatcher is the only word that keeps coming back every time we try to remember our past. I have to face them to find out why. Lost yes, memories. Yes, but I can sense that there is something terrible hidden in our past. And if we remember it, it will destroy us. Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> I'm going now. I love that. What? I can't hear you. That was probably super important. <laughs> I really me neither. Gillian Seed, estimated age 31. Three years ago, he and his wife Jamie Seed taken into protective custody in the Siberian neutral zone by the 17th Siberian Investigative Force. Both Gillian and Jamie suffer from severe amnesia, their memories of events prior to being picked up in Siberia, lost in a mysterious mental fog. Two years ago, after a vain attempt to rebuild their marriage, Jamie and Gillian separate. Following extensive special military training, Gillian is ordered to report to Neo Kobe City as a junker, effective today. And they give you that backstory really quick. That's cool. Um, yeah, this is a time before there was very much accessibility in games. My guess is we're not going to be able to turn on subtitles. We're not going to be able to change the balance of the voices and the music or anything. It's just it's going to be what it is. <laughs> we'll have to do our best. The Konami Omni Building. Junker headquarters. Hopefully that me turning it down helped a little bit, at least with my voice for the game. Act one, Snatch. Have you guys ever seen that movie Snatch with uh, Brad Pitt, Benicio Del Toro, and Jason Statham? I love that movie so much. Okay, Mika, welcome to Junker headquarters. May I help you? Okay, we can enter, look, and investigate. What is the difference between look and investigate? Oh, isn't it so good, Jimmy? That's one of my like top 10 movies of all time. Um, let's look around first. Look at the operator. Uh, she's a beautiful oriental woman. We don't use that term anymore, do we? <laughs> this game is going to age itself so harsh. So there are evil robots uh, killing and impersonating people, Tiny. And they can even sweat. By the way, the main characters have memory loss and marital troubles. Okay, begun game. Essentially, Tiny, thank you for that. <laughs> for everybody that missed that. Yeah, look, it's very casual. Investigate is like, looking at this hard now. Okay, let's look at that poster in the background. Oh, that's cool. We get like a zoom in. It's just a junker recruiting ad. About front pod. It's one of those pod-type reception units where the operator sits in a shielded capsule. This is some pretty heavy-duty stuff they've got here. This place may be more dangerous than I thought. Yeah, Oriental something to use for carpets, not people. There we go, Tiny. That's what I was thinking of. And the camera. It looks like a security camera. I don't see where that camera is. Maybe it's that thing next to the door. And we'll look at the door. It looks like it leads into the inside of the headquarters. And you're an investigator? It took you that long? Um, look at the area. This seems to be Junker headquarters lobby. Their security door looks really tight. Iggity. Um, investigate. Let's investigate the operator. Oh, same thing, Tiny. When I think of 
Gillian, Jillian? I think of like a Jillian Anderson from X-Files when I see that name. First thing that popped up in my head. It's no use. She's protected by a shield. Wait, what? Are you, how are you trying to investigate her? Do you have to like grope her or something? I just said investigate the operator. It's no use. I can't get to her. Okay, investigate the poster. Looks like a government ad. They must be really short on people. Oh, Barry B, thank you so much for that lurk. And then Mika, I'm sorry, may I have your name, please? I'm still not talking to her. I'm just going to continue my investigating. Uh, investigate the front pod. The shield is heat proof and shock proof. It's specifically designed to withstand an attack by snatchers. So investigate is kind of like more details than what a look gives you, I suppose. <laughs> exactly, Tiny. It's no use. I can't investigate. Let's investigate the camera. Let's tear it down. It looks like they're monitoring the opposites. Brilliant deduction. How about the door? It's locked. It looks like the only switch for it is in the operator's pod. Ah, so we need to investigate her, and then we can open up the door. How about the area? There's nobody around but the operator. What organization are you with, sir? <laughs> We're just totally ignoring her. <laughs> she keeps asking us questions like, hmm, what's that? Hmm. I, she's like, I'm um, sir, please. Like, I'm right here talking to you. Okay, I think I've done every other option but enter. Let's do this. <laughs> Intense detail about that camera. <laughs> They're going to snatch those melons. Oh, oh, dang, your country's going into full lockdown tomorrow, Tiny. Oh, my goodness. That is insane. No, but you definitely need something fun and something easy to laugh at. I hope this game offers it. I think it will. <laughs> something to get your minds off all the craziness going on. Okay, I'm afraid only Junker personnel are allowed within the headquarters. That's us, right? Okay, now I can talk to her. Did you just notice she's there, Gillian? Oh, well, let's try talking to that young woman over there. I'm Gillian Seed. I've been assigned to Junker headquarters effective today. Oh, you're Mr. Seed. Please forgive me. My name is Mika Slayton. I'm the administrative assistant and operator here at Junker headquarters. Very pleased to meet you. Yeah, I guess at the very least, Tiny, we are very prepared for going into lockdown. We're kind of used to it. You know, we've done it multiple times over the last two years. It's kind of like, oh, we're doing that again? Okay. Um, wait, can we look more here? Oh, now we have some new options. Let's look at her specifically. <laughs> very pleased to meet you. You're really pretty. No, is this going to be one of those games? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a plate? What is the plate? The official Junker name and trademark appear on it. I don't even see it on the screen. Um, I think we've already looked at the rest of this. Yeah, we've seen this. Oh, we were talking. Okay, so she's saying the, the pod is meant to protect her from snatchers. What? Snatchers even attack up here? Yes, it's happened several times before. They're not stupid, you know. I guess it makes sense to even look at stuff you've looked at before, because in a different scene you get new dialogue, new options. How about the camera? Maybe I should try waving high. The chief always monitors the feed from the camera. And the area. Looks like an entrance to the vault. Well, how do you like it? I bet you'd like to see the office, right? Now we can investigate her. We're much closer. Yeah, <laughs> stop being horny on Maine, Gillian. <laughs> and the people can be impersonated by robots, and yet they seem to accept whoever you say you are. I hope there's more security. <laughs> That's true, Tiny. How do they know that we are actually Gillian? <laughs> it's the horny's not going to stop. Uh, it's I'm trying to investigate her. It's too bad I can't get in there. She's truly gorgeous. <laughs> oh, man. So this is me investigating the plate. Japanese Undercover Neurokinetic Elimination Ranger. Or Junker. Wow, that's a hell of an acronym. Uh, front pod? 
Not even a tank could break through this. Well, at least there's that. Gillian, or Mika's protected from us, Gillian. She needs that because I'm kind of scared for her right now. Uh, let's check out the camera. If I wander around too much, I'll make a bad first impression. True. <laughs> he is having marital problems. It might have been a while, but still, like, contain yourself, Gillian. Come on. And the area. I must look really uptight. Maybe I'd better stop wandering around. Okay, let's talk to her some more. I've been assigned to Junker Operations effective today. You just told me that, Gillian. Gotta talk again? I have a pretty good memory, Mr. Seed, especially if it's concerning an attractive man like you. Oh! This goes both ways. All right. I see how this is going. Let's ask. Ask about junkers. <laughs> I mean, all right, everybody's horny. That's just where this game's going. It is a Christmas game. And Sheely, what's up, dude? You were weak and you fell asleep? How'd you like the ending of Inscription? It was fantastic. Sheely, I really loved that game. I loved how meta the game got at the end. And man, I feel bad for the, uh, the Carter. The Lucky Carter. Wow, what a sad story. I, um, Hasifa dropped some links in the Discord for extra details about Inscription. I still need to watch those videos to get all the other backstory, but I really liked it. Yeah, horny jail for everybody. Okay, let's ask about Junkers. Could you tell me a little bit about Junker operations? The Junkers are a special task force put together to combat the Bioroid Snatcher Menace. It's overseen by government intelligence agencies. And how about Neo Kobe? That's the town we're in. This is my first time in town. Oh, you'll get used to it right away. Everybody's pretty welcome. There are many different ethnic groups and types of people here. It's Japan, but it's not Japan, if you know what I mean. No, I have no idea what you mean, Mika. And let's ask about her. Oh, gosh. Tell me a little bit about yourself. About me? Isn't that a bit forward, Mr. C? Dude, you were just coming on to me a second ago. Well, let me tell you about yourself first. Maybe then you'll tell me. I can tell you're very smooth with the... Oh, this is her talking to us. I can tell you're very smooth with the ladies. Hold on. Oh, can I, I guess I can't do that anymore. <laughs> the Neo Kobe beef. <laughs> I'd really like to know more. How about next time, if we have the chance? Okay, we can't ask her anymore. Um, I think we've done everything. I think now we can probably just enter. I think we've gone through all the options. And you still love how it hasn't been solved yet? And that's how you know the developers put a lot of time and effort into all the secrets. It's incredible, Sheila. Usually people, they dig into the game files and they can discover things very fast. So it is exciting that it's still a mystery, Sheila. That's awesome. I wonder when they'll actually figure everything out. Mr. Seed? Gillian's fine, and you can call me Gillian, Mika. Okay, Gillian. I'll open the main door and show you around headquarters. So now that we've adjusted the volume, does it sound pretty good to you guys now? Now that we don't have that loud jazz intro, I hope it's not too quiet now. Hey, where shall I show you first? Let's just go in order. Let's go to the chief's office. Chief Cunningham, Gillian Seed is here. I brought him in as you requested. Thanks for coming, Seed. I'm Benson Cunningham, the Chief of Junker Operations. Gillian Seed, I've been transferred here from the 17th Special Forces Division. I've heard all about your special training in the military, Seed. I hope you'll put it to good use on your new assignment here. By the way, I understand you're suffering from amnesia. Any sign yet that your memory's coming back? I'm afraid not. I still can't remember a thing from before the Army picked me up three years ago. You're married, aren't you? Yes, but we're separated now. She has amnesia as well, and without any memories between the two of us, I'm afraid there was very little to base a good relationship on. I can see your point there. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, right. Tiny, who are you? A robot? You say you're ha just a handsome man assigned here? Good enough for me. Come on in. That exactly sounds like something a robot would say, right? I have no memory of what happened before this. Yeah, you sound like you were programmed incorrectly, right? Disney, how's it going, Disney? Welcome. And these microphones sound a lot like headphones on a gaming headset. Seely, they probably use like actual 
like nice headphones or microphones when they recorded this, but this was on the Sega CD. So they had to cram a lot of data on a single compact disc. <laughs> so it was probably just compressed to hell. But yeah, it does kind of sound like that, doesn't it? I'm doing fantastic, Disney. Um, got uh, some more Christmas stuff done yesterday, did a little bit more shopping, and we went around and looked at Christmas lights, which funny enough, our like local newspaper, they do like a contest for like Christmas lights around the neighborhoods and they listed like all the winners. So we were able to just like GPS all these different houses and drive by and check them all out last night. We started a little bit late, so some of the houses had turned off their Christmas lights, but we got to see most of them. It was super fun. Okay, let's look around this place. <laughs> yeah, Relentless, you're married? Yes, but available. Okay, let's check out the chief. Is he gonna get horny here again too? Katamari, welcome, dude, how's it going? Happy Saturday. So he's the chief of Junker Operations, eh? Just as I imagined him. Are you stereotyping, Gillian? Did you say something? Are we speaking out loud? Uh, let's look at the monitor. Information from all over the world is continuously pouring in. And his window probably has a nice view up here. It's a nice night view of Neo Kobe. Too bad there are snatchers lurking out there somewhere. Neo Kobe at night. Great view, don't you think? Let's check out his picture. What is this? Oh, the, the plants in the background? Picture of a vase, eh? What a funny design. And his sofa. That looks weird. <laughs> looks like a bunch of bananas or something. Looks like a pretty comfortable sofa. Now we're gonna really look with our investigation. You're done with all your Christmas shopping, Disney? That is awesome. Now have you already wrapped? Or do you still have to do that? I'm pretty much done with all my shopping. I just have a little bit more wrapping to do. I've done probably like two thirds of my wrapping. <laughs> exactly, Sheely. It's been run through YouTube many times. And Tiny, you think he should get away from uh, horny men too? Men, women, and non-humans. I bet we'll find some horny snatchers out there. That's where this game is gonna go. Okay, let's investigate the chief. Uh-oh, we know what this means. Seed, I'm no snatcher. Can't go any further than that. Am I just supposed to take your word for it? Let's check out this monitor. It's an ultra high resolution display panel capable of playing holograms as well. Oh, fancy. And uh, the picture? Hmm. So this is his taste in art, huh? Don't touch that picture. It's very special to me. How about the sofa? <laughs> Investigate the sofa. Sofa. It's an air cushion type of sofa. It's the latest in robot sofas, employing chaos system technology. <laughs> what? <laughs> chaos system? <laughs> yeah, ultra high res, right, Captain? Is it 720p in 1982 or 81, whenever this came? Or not 81, 91, 1990. I forget when this first came out. Um, okay, let's talk to him. Let's ask him about us, Junkers. That's a good idea, Tiny. Get some books for Christmas. Perfect way to, you know, hold out for all the chaos outside, right? <laughs> Go to a different world. And you're still not done shopping, Sheely, because your sister and her wife won't tell me what they... Oh, that's so frustrating, Sheely. I, I've had some of those. I had to make some guesses on a few people. Unfortunately, I couldn't wait any longer. And Skywalker, what's up, buddy? How you doing, dude? Happy Saturday. How are you doing? Okay, let's ask him about Junkers. He says, Junker Headquarters... Oh, there goes Georgie. Uh, Junker Headquarters was set up a year ago by the police as a special task force to combat the snatcher problem. Junker operations were officially started in August of this year. We answer directly to the government's intelligence agencies. This poster is pretty tacky. Whoa, Gillian, what a jerk. Oh, really? That's my design, by the way. Chief, your taste is right out of the Dark Ages. <laughs> oh, wait, that was Mika saying that. <laughs> yeah, that's Georgie barking right now, Disney. I think one of my neighbors probably, like, opened a door, closed a car door or something like that. He hears everything. Yeah, I think the Sega CD, Katamari, at least in the U.S., it came out, I think, in 1992. So Snatcher Rear was probably just a little bit of that after that. But it did come out before the Sega CD. This is the Sega CD version, though. Uh, let's ask about Junker Authority. 
A drunker operates with certain rules and privileges different from regular police officers. Those are 1. The purpose of drunker force is to eliminate bioroid snatchers. 2. A drunker, even in the course of carrying out, must not harm innocent civilians. This is going to be a hard stream, guys. You know folks don't survive my streams. 3. A subject may not be physically investigated or restrained unless irrefutable evidence exists that indicates the subject is indeed a snatcher. So we have to prove that they're a snatcher before we can do anything. 4. A drunker is required to assist and support civilian bounty hunters. What? <laughs> 5. In order to carry out one, a junker is allowed to the use of a blaster, and a navigator, and a turbo cycle. Those are the five rules. Interesting. And you've been reading um, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, and it's so good so far. What is that first Percy Jackson um, novel I'm thinking of, Disney? They made a movie about it, right? Is that... That's not Lemony Snicket's. Is that something else? I know there was another one that became a movie recently. That's so cool, though. Yes, I, I forget when I got my Sega CD Katamari. I think it was like 93, maybe 94. I got it before the PlayStation came out, but not very much before. I didn't get it right away. It was super expensive. That's the first one. Okay, nice. So this is the, the sequel right after that. So if they say there aren't a robot, there's nothing you could do. Unless you find like a picture of them doing something robotic, or if you like maybe see they don't have like, you know, flesh underneath the skin. I don't know, Tiny, how do you prove it? That's a good question. Okay, let's ask about Junker duties. What do we have to do? A Junker's job is to figure out who the Snatchers are and to eliminate them. I want you to put your special training in the military to good use and investigate those points about Snatchers that we don't yet understand. We've got to put a stop to them. Oh, I see. The Lightning Thief is the original one, Taj. I was way off. Thank you for clarifying that. I see what you mean. And it's got some good humor in it as well. That's important. Almost for anything. Even if it's like a serious book, it's good to have at least a little bit of levity, I think. Okay, let's ask about uh, the Junker staff. A Junker's job is highly specialized and extremely dangerous. That's why there are so few of us. Oh, I'm doing fantastic, Skywalker. I got to drive around last night and look at Christmas lights. We got to see the best ones in our town. It was super fun. Um, and we're probably going to wrap some Christmas presents tonight. I'll try to finish that up. How are things with you, dude? Uh, so he says, I'm the chief. Harry's the engineer. And then there's Mika Gibson. And you are one of our runners. It's just the five of us. It's a small group in this huge building. Really? Okay, what about Snatchers themselves? Yes, three years ago, the Snatchers suddenly appeared here in Neo Kobe. We have no idea where they come from or what they want. We do know that they kill, copy the appearance of their victims, and take their place in society, and that their numbers are increasing. Oh, great. That should be enough to make your duties as a Junker quite clear. This is your Junker ID card. It will identify you as a Junker. Carrying it allows you to exercise your special authority. Sweet. I see. Sort of like a police officer's badge, huh? And uh, here's some money. It's not much, but you'll need it to carry out your investigation. Cash? Credit cards aren't accepted in some regions of the city. You'll need this sooner or later. Sounds like it's a rough place out there. Go see Harry, the engineer. He's got your equipment ready for you. I think in such a futuristic town, nobody would be using cash. Everything might be digital or something like that. It looks like Snatcher first came out in 88 in Japan only, Katamari. And the Sega CD version is the only North American release uh, in 94, um, more years ago than I had to figure out. Six years difference, dang. I also wanted to play this version, Katamari, because it has English dialogue. I think it's the only one that actually has English voiceovers. Oh, that's cool, Shili, though. It's good that you have that experience of, like, some of the older games. This might be a little bit too old. Uh, let's check out the Navigators. I don't know what that is. It's a robot designed to assist Junkers by performing all types of analysis. It's got a pretty good sensor set up, too. Okay, now we can check out our uh, possessions. 
born outside the 90s. I was born in the 80s. So we can look at our possessions. We can look at our Junker ID. This card gives me all the special rights of a Junker. I'll be carrying this as my ID from here on out. Seed. That card is very important. Take great care not to lose it. Let's look at our cash. This is the cash they gave me for expenses. Having I mean, to carry cash around is so inconvenient. I agree, I hate using cash. But sometimes you need it for certain places, right? Oh, and 80s for you as well, Katamari? Nice. But did you ever play this game back in the day? This is my first time ever experiencing it. And the one after the Lightning Thief is the Sea of Monsters. How many Percy Jackson books are there? I think that's all we can look at. Let's uh, investigate our ID. So it's an ID card with a special IC chip built in. All of my personal data is recorded on this card. And let's investigate the cash. How much did they give us? It's cold, hard cash. This should be plenty to get the job done with. How much is it? <laughs> Although it, we're in Japan, I guess it's like yen or something. <clears throat> Never had a Sega CD. They were expensive back in the day, Katamari. I got mine I think when the Model 2 Sega CD came out and it had dropped by like 100 bucks. Um, I think we investigated everything. Let's show the Junker ID. That's proof that you're a Junker. Take good care of it. And let's uh, show him our cash. <laughs> Look at this money you just gave me. Here's some funds for expenses. Don't waste them. And no promises. Okay, I think we're ready to exit. So we're probably going to go back here on the escalator, whatever this thing is. Uh, where would you like to go next? Let's check out the engineering room. There's only five people that work here. Whoa, what is that poster in the background? Is that like supposed to be Marilyn Monroe or something? Uh, this is engineering. All the junkers, that is all the runner's equipment is made here. Hmm, it doesn't look like Harry's around at the moment. Well, can't meet that guy. So five is the original in the series, and the other five are, and then five in the sequel series. So ten total, I guess. Or seven, Disney. That's a lot. That's a lot of reading to do. How was the trailer, Tiny? Did you like it? He's a writing machine, the opposite of uh, uh, George R. R. Martin who he can't write to save his life now. He just kind of like stopped. He loves side projects. He won't finish his books. Okay, let's look at Mika's face. That we're coming to engineering. You are truly beautiful, Mika. Thanks, Gillian. I'll take that at face value. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, look at the area. There are tools and machines all over the place. It's a regular factory in here. I love like the old Japanese kind of being translated to English. It gets so awkward and funny. This room always looks like this. I don't know how he finds anything. Oh, that's so cool, Tiny. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And there's a new one, Disney, called the uh, Daughter of the Deep. Oh, nice. Okay, that's everything to look at. Let's uh, ask about Harry, the guy that should be here. Harry Benson is our engineer. He's a bit of a lush, but he's friendly and sweet old guy. And what about the navigators? Every Junker investigator gets an analysis robot. Quite a combination, eh? We call robots navigators. That's gonna be the Metal Gear thing they were talking about, I think. And Gibson? His wife was killed by a snatcher two years ago. After that, he quit his detective job and became a junker. Since then, he's been living with his daughter, Katrina. Isn't a junker kind of an investigator? Like, I'm, I guess it's, I thought a junker was like an investigator solely working against snatchers. Okay, let's look at... Well, we still only have the same possessions. I guess we can show her our possessions. I don't know why. Here's our ID, Mika. It's probably not a good idea to show that to people too much. Why not? It's like a badge, right? Let's show her our cash. That's your expense money, so you can use it while you're on investigation. Yeah, I think we're done here. There's nothing else. 
Hey, where would you like to go next? The detective room. Is this our room? <laughs> America's weird. <laughs> or the people translate in English to, or Japanese to English. It, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Uh, this is the detective's room. It's the office for our runners. That's what we call junker investigators like you. You'll be using the, junk, the desk in the back. What about this desk near the door here? That's Gene's desk. Gene Jack Gibson. He's our ace runner. Okay, let's check out Mika's face again. Oh, about the drinking age being 21. <laughs> you think it should be younger, Tiny? Because <laughs> in all honesty, it should probably be older <laughs> based on how people treat it when they hit that age. Oh my gosh. Mika. Yes, what do you want? It's getting so awkward. I can sense that you and I are destined to fall in love. It might sound crazy, but oh no. Gillian, you're married, aren't you? Hey, I thought we already explained this. And they treat it that way because of the forbidden factor creates taboo. That's true. Sometimes if you keep something away from somebody tiny, it's that much more enticing, I guess. Okay, let's check out the monitor. A lot of information flows into here. All the information available to our runners is output from Jordan. It's Jordan. Near the desk? This is an antique desk. Jean's really into antiques. Okay, let's check the far desk. That's our desk, I think. Looks like a nice desk, but I probably won't be using it much. And the area. This place is really different from other detective offices. Okay, let's ask about Harry. He's quite brilliant. He's won three Nobel Prizes and the Fields Prize too? Fields Prize? How about Navigators? Gene's Navigator is called Little John. No, I wonder what kind of Navigator you'll get. And Gibson? He's apparently out on an investigation at the moment. I'll introduce you as soon as he gets back. And Katrina, that was his daughter, right? She's Jean's only child. She turned 18 this year. Okay, we still have the same possessions, so we don't have to go through that menu. I think we're done here. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I feel like I've heard the name Disney, but I've never read it or seen anything about it. Adamari. That's funny. I, I still enjoy to have a beer or drinks every now and then, but I can't drink like I used to. I just, I get hangovers very easily, where before I could drink all night and have no problems at all. So I definitely have to taper my expectations when drinking quite a bit. Okay, let's get out of here. Yeah, it's expensive. It's not good for you. It's, it's fun when you're unwinding with some friends or something, but yeah, they don't get too into it. It's not worth it. Uh, let's check our computer room. We haven't seen this yet. This is Junker Headquarters computer room. It's linked to databases throughout the country, so you can find almost any information you might need. <laughs> this is like the old, like, Batman computer from the 60s show, where there's just lights and flashing things everywhere. Although, much more futuristic looking, of course. And Katamar, you have some nice bourbon and brandy that's nice on the rocks, but you just never actually think to drink the stuff that's just sitting in your house for free. The same thing, I rarely drink, honestly, now. I probably drink maybe once or twice a month, if even that. And it's usually just when I have friends over. Sometimes if I barbecue or if I'm going to watch my fights, I'll have a few beers, but that's typically it. Okay, let's look at her face once again and see how awkward we can make this. And you've never been drunk, and you're 30 relentless. You're not missing out on much. You're not missing out on much at all. Mika says, you're definitely landed on too thick, don't you think? Yeah, I do. But I have to try every option. And Tiny, you did not uh, drink probably from 16 to 21. And it's 16 when you can start drinking uh, where you're at, Tiny. But then you went through a period of doing it frequently, but you're noticing habits of drinking tied to emotional state. Yeah, once you notice something like that, tiny good on you to recognize that and steer away from that. 
Okay, in the computer. Antiques in the computer room, eh? I haven't seen a keyboard in some time. They don't use keyboards? A number of input and output devices are linked to the host computer. Okay, let's ask about this ancient computer. Oh, and they changed it to 18 now, uh, Tiny. I wonder why. This is our host computer, uh, model RM1013. We call it Jordan. This is the Jordan they were talking about. Okay, that's for Junker Online Regional Data Access Network. It employs full-scale artificial intelligence-based processors. Jordan is fully programmed with all human learning routines and uses an intelligence or intelligent interface to perform automatic translation problem solving. You name it. It employs expert class artificial intelligence routines developed for fieldwork robots. It's the best there is. Okay. Let's ask about how do we use this thing? Yeah, that is interesting that you can vote, at least in America at 18. You can smoke, you can gamble, but you can't drink. Although what's even wilder is you think back to the 20s during Prohibition, there was a time where alcohol was illegal in this country. Although there is one drink I do want to indulge in in the next week or so, and that's eggnog. And not just eggnog, but more specifically eggnog with brandy. I don't drink brandy ever. It's just not my alcohol, but eggnog is just so thick and potent. You can probably put any alcohol in there you want and it totally masks the flavor. It just gives the eggnog a little bit of a different aftertaste, but I think that's actually pretty good. Okay, so to use the computer, Mika says, first, put your Junker card in the slot. Once it's confirmed you as the user, you just follow the instructions that Jordan flashes on the screen. Okay, so I just gotta remember, use our card to access the computer. Okay, let's ask her about Harry. Harry's an orphan. He lost his parents in the catastrophe. What's the catastrophe? <laughs> um, the navigators. Don't worry, you'll be able to get one from Harry. Oh, that's our computer that helps us, right? Gibson? If you meet him, you'll understand why he's so good. And Katrina. We're kind of asking about the same things we did in a different room, but we get different responses. She's a model. She's quite cute. Oh, no. And she just turned 18? Oh, no. Although I don't know what the age of consent is in Japan. <laughs> it, might not, it might be less than 18. Um, let's use Jordan. Let's use our card. Go ahead. Sit down here. Once you're registered on the system, the rest is easy. Should we use a computer voice for this? I am Jordan, Junker Headquarters host AI computer system. Please insert your ID card. I'm not sure if, I don't think Mika is 18. She might be tiny, but we were asking about Katrina. That is Gibson's daughter. I guess she's a model and she just turned 18. Please insert your ID card. What? Has this thing got a personality? Okay, we'll use our card. Okay, Junker, card going in. User confirmed as Gillian Seed. Welcome to Jordan. What sort of information do you need? Well, at least to let me in. We'll load our ID file. Jordan ID file. Use the cursor to input the name of the person you are searching for. Input first name, then last name without a space. I like it that it gives us that specific information. For example, input John Konami as John Konami. All one word. Or you can search for just the first name, for example, John. Let's try inputting a name. Oh my gosh, we actually have to type it. Let's try Mika. This is cool. I like it when they give you this kind of options. Mika Slayton, Administrative Assistant, Junker Agency, age 23. Well, that answered that question, Tiny. She's 23. Height, 167 centimeters. I have no idea what that is. How many bananas per football is that? How many How many bald eagles per shotgun blast is that? Weight, 55 kilograms. Once again, no idea. 
blood type A positive, marital status single. All right. Graduate. I just hear Andy yelling from across the house. Graduated from Kobe City University with dual major in criminal psychology and municipal data management. Worked at Kobe Crime Research Lab before moving to Junker Agency. Handled numerous unusual cases as a lab and solved them by using the dangerous techniques of attaining complete simpatico with criminals. But psychological stress from job led to her resign. Oh my lord, that was the biggest run-on sentence I think I've ever seen. Oh, I was losing myself there. Life 5 is pretty average, I think. And we're Judge. How is it going? <laughs> Clearly, John Konami is the right name. Recommendation from Junker's chief led her to joining the agency. Can you guys hear me when I use that robot voice, or is that too distorted? I could. It's funny. When I use that robot voice, let me listen to it. Test, test, one, two. When I'm using that voice, I'm actually talking like a robot to myself, which might make it even less intelligible. I'm not sure. Is 5'4 the average height? Yeah, so she's actually slightly above average, I guess. <laughs> I was talking for Gillian, because he's such a horn dog, but it just said that Mika is single, so I did my giggity. Oh, do you appreciate the robot voice? Thank you, Toa. We'll keep using that. Okay, um, let's try another name. Crap, I don't remember what the chief's name is. Is his name Chief? Let's try Katrina. That was like the daughter's name. I remember that one. I like that I can only do the first name. That helps tremendously. Now, we're probably going to run into like multiple characters with the same first name, so we'll have to use the last name. Katrina Gibson, age 18, height 160 centimeters, weight 43 kilograms, blood type O negative. Only daughter of Jean Jack Gibson, won Miss 17 contest in 2046. Currently a popular model in holographic advertisements. Dislikes identifiable by heart-shaped birthmark on inner thigh. Wait. Huh? Her, her dislike is that she's identifiable by a heart-shaped bookmark birthmark? Is that right? That's confusing. Okay, we don't really need to use this right now. It's just kind of fun to test it out. We'll go ahead and quit. Yeah, I think the average height for males in America is like 5'8", maybe 5'9", or something. <laughs> she just wants to be sneaky. Um, load a fact file. What is that? Jordan fact file. Please select the category you wish to search. History. That's a generic fact file. The catastrophe. Okay, now we can get some more lore on the world. Catastrophe. The... <laughs> Do you have to say it that way, computer? On June 6, 1996, a mysterious explosion destroyed the Chernton Research Facility near Moscow. The explosion released a biological weapon called Lucifer Alpha, which has been under development by the old Soviet regime into the atmosphere, creating the greatest biohazard in history. Within one week, the bacteria spread throughout Eastern Europe and Eurasia, killing 80% of the population there. Six months later, Lucifer Alpha suddenly mutated into a non-lethal form. Northern Eurasia, now an unpopulated wasteland, was designed and remains a United Nations neutral zone to prevent unauthorized exploitation. Since the disaster, which has become simply known as the catastrophe, hundreds of research papers have been published purporting to reveal its causes, but the real reason behind it remains unknown. <laughs> Stupid internet. <laughs> Yeah, that makes more sense, Judge. She dislikes that people have actually seen her nude. <laughs> I like that. So, I wish Therapy Android was here. We could ask her about the history. How true is that to real life? This huge thing that swept over Russia. Okay, let's ask about Junkers. Oh my gosh, there's so much. Wait, no, we didn't finish history. We could be doing this all day. There's like a ton of stuff here. World War Three? What happened with that? World War Three, 2010 through 2011. I must have slept through that. Only one year? August 8th, 2010, 14 years after the catastrophe, war broke out over possession of northern Eurasia, left uninhabited by the disaster. Conservative Soviet leaders who managed to survive the catastrophe 
received military support from China and launched an invasion of the region. Nevertheless, Western economic sanctions forced the Chinese to withdraw the support, leading to victory for Western forces. Ending just six months after it began, this conflict has been known as the Half-Year War. Yeah, that is really short. World War II lasted a super long time. And World War I, I guess. <laughs> Tiny. It could be so many people. Who could it be? Everybody. We're all one. Or Alex. Alex as well. Let's see. You would think my ISP would keep our connection stable, seen as one of the techs lives in the house, but still knows. <laughs> That's funny, Taj. Wait, your um, you have a roommate that works for your ISP? That's pretty cool. Eighty-year war. That's right, Tiny. Oh my gosh. Yeah, World War Three was nothing. Six months. Piece of cake. Okay, the Siberian neutral zone. Siberian neutral zone. The left uninhabited by the catastrophe. The United Nations has controlled the bulk of Siberian territory for the past 50 years, prohibiting any outside interference. After effects of Lucifer Alpha contamination are expected to prevent any plant or animal. It's an animal. Life from flourishing there for the next 50 years. In order to prevent the reoccurrence of something like World War III, the United Nations has set up extensive monitoring stations of the borders of the region. Okay, history. <laughs> the nuclear elimination. Maybe nobody has nuclear weapons anymore. Elimination of nuclear weapons, beginning with the INF, Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty in 1987. Strategic theater nuclear weapons were steadily reduced. The threat of nuclear war was further reduced by IAEA's International Atomic Energy Agency's Implementation of Military Use Nuclear Material Manufacturing Cessation Accord, with, or, which enforced the disposal of all military use nuclear materials at the beginning of the century. And last but not least, the witch hunt. Witch hunts, aka bioroid hunts, a social phenomenon caused by stature problem, a form of group violence involving the lynching of numerous innocent individuals who are believed to be bioroid snatchers in reality. In general, individuals of lower social standing were the targets of attack named after the medieval witch hunts, which took place in Salem, Massachusetts, USA, due to the similarity of the two occurrences. The phenomenon underscored the north-south rift of modern society, a form of revulsion at the growing poverty problem. Well-to-do groups from the north attack slum dwellers in the southern regions, resulting in great loss of life to individuals who had no connection to the snatcher menace. The problem died out when it became clear that snatchers only targeted individuals of high social standing. Interesting. So they were like attacking a bunch of poor people just like hey they're snatchers and they weren't they only go after rich people oh nice relentless wait how tall are you i, I missed what the average uh, man high oh five nine i got just a little bit on that i'm a little bit above average let's see and according to wikipedia and uh oh yeah and five three and a half that's actually shorter than i thought Interesting. You're about 5'8", Tiny, right around there as well. Okay, let's do... I think that's all the history. Let's check out this concerning Junker. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I can do all this. I'm going to lose my voice before I get out of this history thing. Maybe we'll come back to this later. We'll just know that there's a lot of stuff to look at here. Oh my lord. Yeah, you can get a ton of lore from this, but when we need to know more, we'll come back here. Thank you for using Jordan. I look forward to our next session together. What a nice computer. And it didn't even flirt with us. Um, do we ask about everything? I think we did. Yeah, so let's... I think we're done here. I think we're ready to exit. <laughs> I love that. I need to protect my soft interior. And which other reasons are being attacked? They were kind of vague about that, huh, Katamari? Just north versus south? <laughs> I like that, Disney. The computer sounds oddly like you. Did I not press the button? Okay, where would we like to go next?
<laughs> Perfect, Relentless. It'll make sense because Snatcher started with very, very horny vibes. Um, Let's go to the shooting range. Oh, this would have been perfect to test out if the light gun works, huh? This is the shooting range. Junkers come here to improve their marksmanship. Okay, let's look at her face again. How awkward can we make this? You're definitely laying it on thick, don't you think? Okay, same thing as before. And we'll look at the area. A number of man-shaped targets appear in the practice booth. We call it our shooting practice range, but it's a lot like a video game arcade, don't you think? And let's ask her about how to practice. How do you start practice? Just follow the Junker's Eye practice system. And we'll ask about Harry. If you're that interested, why don't you just meet him? So you can ask about all the same people we've asked before. Yeah, no female targets. No, nah, snatchers don't do that, Judge. <laughs> we only have to kill dudes. Ask about the navigators. Don't worry, you'll be able to get one from Harry. I'm probably going to skip saying the same things over and over and over again. Even though we are getting a little bit of different dialogue. Let's just get to the good stuff. Uh, let's try practicing. Gillian, you haven't got your blaster yet, have you? Let's hurry up and go visit Harry. Come on, let's go see Harry. But I think I should get some practice in first. Yes, but... Come on, let me take a crack at it. All right, if you must practice, I'll let you use my ray gun, but it doesn't have the power of a blaster. Is that okay? Yeah, thanks, Mika. Okay, let's start shooting practice. If you press A, you can draw your blaster. Press C to fire. You can put your blaster away by pressing the A button again. Are you ready? Remember, shoot only snatchers. So I think the way this controller is laid out. This is kind of reversed for me, but this is, this is X, so I think this is A, B, and C, as far as like a Genesis controller. I need to get some of those retro, like Bluetooth Genesis style controllers. So when I play these games, it like all feels and maps perfectly, right? <laughs> hey, let's get dangerous, Skywalker. Have you ever seen this game before, Skywalker? And Waffle Master, what's up, dude? Welcome. Be careful, you don't hit any civilians. Oh, this is like those old school light gun games where you have to just shoot the bad guys if you know what they look like. The red gauge on the left shows the number of targets to appear. The yellow gauge on the right shows the number of hits. I'll start it with an introductory level. Okay, so I need to pull out my gun. Good luck. So A to pull out gun, there we go. That's a bad guy. But what if that dude is a snatcher? <laughs> it would look like a human, right? How would I know? So I'm just using the D-pad to move the, uh, the cursor around. Perfect, right? Fantastic. A perfect score. You're quite the shot, aren't you, Jillian? Wow, a perfect score right off the bat. I bet you've done this before, haven't you? I have not. I've never done it before. Oh, you just got done with finals, Waffle? Congratulations. Oh, that's got to feel so good to uh, have a break, relax, no more stress. Just get to enjoy the holidays. When do you have to go back to school? No, ma'am. First time out. I can't stand liars, you know. Remember, we have amnesia, so that could be very much, you know, our first time, essentially. <laughs> I love that relentless. No reason to make her feel uh, stupid for being stupid. It already happened. Let's move on. <laughs> ah, Skywalker, doing what I do best. Murdering. And that's true, Katamari. They weren't really man-shaped. They were just like pictures of faces. It's due to all that practice I had in the military, Mika. Fantastic. And no wasted shots either. Gene will be surprised. You have until February, Waffle? That is fantastic. That's like a month and a half off. Sweet, dude. I'm excited for my like two and a half weeks coming up. Come on, let's go see Harry. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Now, all we need to do is find Harry. 
So he was supposed to be in the engineering room. Is that right? I'm not sure. Ooh, what kind of tea are you making, Relentless? Harry's got to be back by now. I don't know. He's quite the free-willing type. There he oh, is. Oh, good. Harry's back. Great to meet you. You're uh, Gillian Seed, right? Haven't we met somewhere before? No, I don't believe so. Really? Well, I guess I must be imagining things. The, the animation on his mouth is actually really well done. I like that. Lemon ginger tea. Oh, that sounds fantastic. So, Waffle, yeah, don't spoil anything. I haven't seen the new Spider-Man yet, but... Like, 10 out of 10, what would you rate that movie? I've heard a lot of good things so far. I'm excited to see it. Um, Andy just started watching The Witcher Season 1 again to kind of help recap Season 2, before we get to Season 2 again. Because I think it just came out yesterday. She's uh, watching it right now, I think. Give it an 8? That's really good. Nice. I can't wait to see it. Okay, let's look at Harry. Hmm, somehow I get the same impression. I met this guy somewhere? What's wrong? Do I have something hanging up from my nose? And we can also look at that poster again. There's a poster and a photograph on the wall. Let's investigate, Harry. <laughs> those are odd work clothes. Let me take a look at those. Hey, what are you doing? Stop it! <laughs> it is groping, essentially. That's what it sounds like. Um, we can also investigate the poster. This is very old. This kind of printing technology hasn't been used since the last century. Keep your hands off that, will ya? It's getting pretty fragile. And the photo. Where, did, where was this picture? I didn't even see where this came from. It's a picture that was on the wall. This appears to have been cut out from a larger photo. Oh, now that we've, I guess, looked at that photo, we can ask about it. Okay, let's ask him about navigators. I know, I know. All right, allow me to introduce the Navigator, which I designed especially for you. Hey, Metal Gear, get out here. Metal Gear. What is this? I love that. It's so tiny and cute. They give this like epic Metal, introduction. Introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you, Gillian. I am Metal Gear Mop 2. I am programmed to be your personal assistant. So Metal cool. Gear? That's a pretty weird name. Metal oh, Gear. Oh, he's cute. Uh, thank you. I think he's turning red. I took his basic design and his name from the Metal Gear Menace of the late 20th century. But uh, quite unlike that Metal Gear, this one was designed for peaceful purposes. That's true. So this came out after the original Metal Gear on like the Nintendo and stuff, but it was way before Metal Gear Solid, which what was that like 98 or something? This came out like 10 years before that. His best boy for sure, Tajay. Um, okay, let's ask about our oh, let's ask more about Metal Gear. Navigators are designed from the start as a Junker's investigative assistant. On-site detection, analysis, recording, communications, you name it, they're packed with features. And Metal Gear here is the latest model. What about an attack system? Don't they carry any weapons? Afraid not. They're unarmed. First of all, the main idea behind a navigator is to assist in an investigation's data management. But they do have a save function. Just choose the Use Metal Gear command and, you, and then the Save command. You can record the exact status of your investigation that way. So that's how you would save the game, but I'm just going to be using quick states, <laughs> quick saves like that. But we can use it as well. In the same way, you can use the use light command to help you when it's too dark to see. I told you they were nice to have around, didn't I? Hasifa, what's up, dude? Glad you can make it. Happy Saturday. How about communications? Does he have some kind of radio? Yep, there's a video phone installed. A video phone? That's right. Just select Use Metal Gear and then Use Video Phone to access it. In theory, you can use it anywhere, but you have to watch out for interference. 
sometimes the signal just can't get through. Okay, let's also ask about our blaster. That's what we really need to find. Oh, gonna get some sleep, Tiny? The hangover and lockdown news has taken me out of it. Go hibernate like a bear. Hope you feel better, Tiny. Get some good rest, and I hope that, you know, this whole lockdown thing doesn't get you down too hard. <laughs> Metal Gear. <laughs> How's it going, Hasifa? How you doing? Take care, Tiny. Thank you for joining us. Um, and we'll ask about the blaster. Oh, that's right. Uh, don't panic yourself. I got it right over here. This is your blaster, the Ice. official weapon of a junker. It's got full user feedback circuitry, adjusting itself to your reaction time. In other words, it's just as good as you are. What do you think? Here, see how she feels. That looks so cool. <laughs> I love that. It's unbelievably light. <laughs> you bet it is. This ain't one of those ray guns the army uses. She's put together with the latest carbon polymers and ceramics, not affected by heat one bit. And her ergonomic design optimizes both functionality and firepower. Well, what do you think, Gillian? I'll take it. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> Clever, Tasha. Get it, John? It's a light gun. Like you could use an actual light gun when playing this game. I like that. That's cute. Let's ask him about Snatchers. You're an engineer. Tell me about this, uh, how the Snatchers are built. It's odd, but we've never been able to get a specimen. They're always stolen or have self-destructed. They have any weaknesses? They're built really well, so it's tough to destroy them outright. Try to immobilize them. So like, shoot the legs? They've got these stilts on their, or slits on their head for some reason. A well-placed shot there will often destroy their control functions. Oh, that's better than shooting the legs. That's why it's important to practice your marksmanship. Oh. I have a video phone call from Jean-Jacques Gibson coming in. Connecting. Call. This is the other detective. Joker HQ, this is Gibson. I've cornered a probable male snatcher. I'm in the abandoned factory in the M District. Request immediate backup. Gillian, that means you. You better head out right away. All righty. your help. We must hurry. We'll use a turbo cycle to travel to the scene. Be careful, Gillian. We're getting right to it. Now, I don't know what the probability of death this in this is game a turbo is. turbo cycle, specially designed for junker use. In addition to three-wheeled ground travel, it is capable of hovering and high-speed flight. The vehicle is also VTOL capable, so takeoffs and landings in narrow areas present no difficulty. A flying tricycle, huh? I just came in on one of these things. We have been assigned this vehicle for use in our investigations. That looks like a car, not a tricycle. <laughs> Let's uh, take a look at it real quick. The turbo cycle body. It's brand new and was just tuned up. It's a 47 interceptor. It's built by the same company that builds the shuttle. And the tires? On the ground, it runs on three wheels, but they're retracted during flight. And the area. This is the Junker HQ parking lot. Several turbo cycles are parked in the area. Let's investigate the car. It's built with the latest ceramo plastics and carbon polymers. It doesn't even have a scratch on it. Sounds like our gun. And investigate the tire. There's no problem. The tires have the inspector's stamp on them. And let's investigate the area. There's nobody in the parking lot besides us. So we could use Metal Gear right now. I think I'm going to jump in the cycle and help our buddy out. Yeah, I know, Judge, right? Coworkers in trouble. Let's investigate everything. Hopefully this game doesn't have a timer feature. Or he's already dead. We're in the turbo cycle. Operation is computer controlled. Where would you like to go? Uh, we're going to the... <laughs> Let's go home. <laughs> Let's go to the factory rooms. Now departing for the abandoned factory. We love the music in this game. This is great. Hasifa, would police quests make you do side stuff before doing the main quest? Even though it seems like it's urgent? My first day on the job, and now this. Ace Junker Gibson is cornered a suspected snatcher. I wonder if this guy really is a snatcher. 
Guess I'll find out now if all that training really paid off. Welcome back, Relentless. So we got an emergency call from Gibson, the other detective, and he's holed up like in an abandoned factory with a snatcher. So we're heading there as quickly as we can, <laughs> fast as we can, to help him out. We've arrived at the abandoned factory. What would you like to do? Oh, a Blade Runner VR game would be so cool. Um, let's uh, exit the Turbo Cycle and let's go help our buddy. We've arrived at the abandoned factory. This is where uh, Jean called from. Let's look around the building. It's a battered old factory judging by its design. I'd say it dates from the period when manned production techniques were still used. It appears abandoned. Let's look at the sky. The sky is getting quite dark. It looks like a storm may be coming in. I guess the closest thing to a VR game like Blade Runner Hasifa would be if you modded uh, Cyberpunk to be in VR. I think there are mods for that already. This place is quite run down. It looks deserted too. Okay, let's investigate the building. The building is heavily damaged. It's probably been abandoned since the last century. And the area? There's no sign that anybody's around. And the motion detector. Metal, are you reading anything? I can't tell from here. We'll have to move inside. What use is your motion detector? <laughs> We're not very far away. Um... Okay, I guess we'll enter... No, we, that takes us into the turbo cycle. I guess we have to use metal here? We could save right here. How does that work? All right, I'll save everything that has happened up until now. Which file number would you like to save it in? This is like the first chance we've ever had to save the game. Let's just save one. Save completed. Would you like to continue play? Yes, continue play. All right, now we're turning to the investigation. I haven't seen the new Spider-Man. I really want to, though. I definitely want to see that. Ooh, nice. That'll definitely be good when you're not feeling well. Relentless. I love tea and honey when I'm sick. So, okay, how do I go in there? I don't want to enter the turbo cycle, do I? That's like if I want to leave this area. How do I go inside this place? I've done all the investigating. Hmm. Maybe I have to use video phone? Maybe I have to talk to him. Sorry, Gillian. I can't get a clear frequency on this location. Oh, we can't do that, darn it. Why not, Metal? It's probably due to the presence of Snow 9. Snow 9? It's a bioengineered form of pollen which interferes with radio transmissions. Oh, that's crazy. Ooh, favorite Christmas song. That's a tough one, Disney. I like a lot of Christmas songs. Um, I actually like a lot of those classic ones that are typically sung by like a like a choir. Think like um, like Silent Night or something like that. Uh, the cheery ones are fun too, but I think I like that more kind of classical, somber Christmas music. Um, Carol of the Bells. That's a good one too. How about you? Oh, it's perfect for sore throats. Uh, I almost need it when I'm streaming just because of how much I'm talking for four hours. I guess I'm, I'm going to try entering the turbo cycle. I feel like it's going to take me out of here. And what's everybody's favorite Christmas songs, by the way? Jeez, looks pretty scary in there. Why don't we head home? <laughs> Gillian, you're a full-fledged junker now. Pull yourself together. Oh no. Oh, no. What was that? A male scream. Perhaps something has happened to Jean-Jacques. Did he just get killed because I took too long getting inside? Gillian, please use extreme caution. I read multiple moving objects within the factory. This could indicate the presence of snatchers or insectors. Insectors? What in the world's that? A spider-like robot used by snatchers as security devices. Though compact in size, they are armed with needle guns. Use extreme caution. ruh -ro. So, Hasifa, is that like a choir? The, the pentatonics? Ah, those are classics, Disney. Jingle Bells and Away in a Major. Away in a Major is kind of more that somber one as well. 
Um, actually, you know, when I just want like background Christmas music, my absolute favorite is basically the soundtrack to Charlie Brown Christmas. It's that kind of like smooth, light jazz Christmas music. I, I can listen to that endlessly. I love that stuff. Okay, now we have the enter option. All right, we're going in. Keep your blaster ready. Push A button to draw your blaster. Here we go. Do I have to pull it out now? Oh, that's cool. We get like some uh, footstep sounds. <laughs> it says die punk on the wall. We've entered the factory. This is the spot where he placed that video phone call. Okay, let's look around the ground. There's debris everywhere. Please watch your step. Oh, it's acapella group. That's really cool. I don't think I've heard, do they know it's Christmas? It doesn't ring a bell. Oh, Tajay, thank you for the lurk, dude. And driving home for Christmas? You don't know, you never have really remembered the songs too much. Judge, the same. Some of the songs that I I really like, but I don't pay attention to the, the names of the song. I forget the names of the song all the time. It's a really good one. I'll check that out when out, Disney. Thank you. Okay, let's look at the wall. Hmm. There are pipes running everywhere. And the ceiling? The ceiling looks quite weak. And the area. The building is severely damaged. It should be demolished. And the pipe. It's been weakened by rust in several places. Let's investigate the ground. I scan the area with my sensors, but I can't pick up anything special. So when you do that, you might find like a useful item or something. How about the wall? It looks like the concrete here is quite corroded. Ceiling? This place looks like it could collapse at any moment. We must be careful. And the area? There's nothing special here. Oh yeah, really? <laughs> Where is John Jack anyway? How about the pipe? Yow, that's really hot. I'm going to have a blister there. Did you just grab a random pipe? Be careful. The surface is hot due to the steam within. So wait, this place is still actively being used? There's like hot water flowing through the pipes? Let's investigate with the motion detector. Metal, aren't you picking up anything? Nothing's moving. That's odd. What happened to Jean? Let's listen. I'm not picking up any sounds. <laughs> yeah, we love grabbing random pipes here at Jocadia. Um, we don't have any items we can use here. Let's, uh, I guess we're going to move around. Let's go to the next base. Advance. All right, now moving ahead. Oh, what is that? What the? It's Little John. Little John? That's his robot. Yes. Let's uh, take a look at little John here. Oops, wrong button. Look, little John. Oh my, little John's been demolished. There's no way to repair, or there's no way to repair the damage this bad. That sucks. There's wreckage everywhere. I don't detect anything special. Let's look at the ground. Little John parts are spread everywhere. This is awful. Imagine like a little robot seeing another robot just like him. Like that's gotta be horrific. Especially when they give him like a personality. Let's investigate Little John. This charring indicates he was hit by fire from a laser cannon. Nearly all his circuits are burned completely through. His functions have been completely terminated. Nevertheless, his memory may be all or partially intact. Where is Gibson? A navigator never leaves his runner's side unless there is a very serious reason. We have to hurry. Gibson's in trouble. Wait, can I, like, take anything? For, like, the memory? Oh, memory chip. There we go. Well, what do you think? Can you get this memory chip out of there in one piece? I will attempt it. Now retrieving memory chip. 
cool. Memory chip retrieved. I love how um, they kind of sound like they're very echoey right now, like because we're in an abandoned building. It makes sense. And Disney, that song's about people in Africa and asking them if they know it's Christmas. One of the lines is, where nothing ever grows, no rain or rivers flow, do they know it, it's Christmas time at all? I kind of feel that way, Disney in California. It's actually pretty cold right now. We've had a rainy cold a couple weeks, but sometimes in December, it could be like 75, 80 degrees Fahrenheit and just nice and comfortable all winter long. So it's like, do we even know it's Christmas? No, not at all. If I didn't have a calendar, I wouldn't. Yeah, Judge, they said like there's something in the head that controls the movement. So if we shoot them in the head, we should be able to slow them down. Maybe capture one of these snatchers. Anything else we need to investigate here? See, I can only find Little John's memory chip. I think that's all we have to do here. Let's listen. I can't confirm any sounds except for the water drops and Little John's shorty naps. That sucks. Okay, let's move to the next spot. Let's advance. All right, moving ahead now. What do we have here? Things are scattered all over the floor. Please watch your step. Let's investigate. Oh, let's use a motion detector here. Metal, anything on your sensors? No, I'm not getting any reading. Let's investigate the area. We're the only ones in the area. Let's listen. Not picking up any sounds. Okay, let's uh, move it. Let's advance again. I don't think there's anything here. And you love how there's a red cord that is burning down as if it's about to explode. <laughs> I know, that thing's in wreckage, right? Terrible condition. All right, we're moving ahead now. Oh, somebody there. Is that him? The person? Wait, there's a figure on the floor. Well, let's look at the body. Oh my gosh. Oh, dear God. <laughs> that reaction. Oh, that was great. Gene. Gibson. It's Gibson. My God. His head's been twisted off completely. Oh my gosh. This game gets gruesome. Okay. Let's look at the... <laughs> He's having a very bad day. Let's look at the corpse. Jeez. I wish I haven't... I didn't have to meet him like this. I can't believe they killed Gene. He dropped his blaster here. Okay, let's investigate Gibson. He's still warm. That scream we heard was no doubt his. What killed him? Maybe he tripped. His head has been twisted off. He died instantly. It would take incredible strength to do this. Okay, let's investigate his clothing. Oh, there was a key in one of his pockets. Let's investigate his blaster. <laughs> yeah, Skywalker, this guy grew some quick, right? <laughs> it's an old tight blaster. It's definitely jeans. It's still warm. He probably fired several shots. Okay, let's check out that key. What is this key for? I don't know of anywhere the old keys like this are still used. And let's try the motion detector. Hey, Metal, aren't you picking anything up? No, I'm not getting any reading. Let's listen. I'm not picking up any sounds. Maybe we should use our um, video phone. Can't transmit from this area. Well, then how come Gibson was able to call in? a good question. No doubt the level of Snow 9 in the area has increased since then. The Snatchers may be using Snow 9 as a screen. I love that relentless. Probably tripped on the stairs. <laughs> oh, there goes my head. Um, let's, there's a third option here. Let's uh, report analysis results. Little memory. I'm afraid I can't analyze another navigator's memory. Oh, well, that's from the chip that we picked up. We'll have to go back to headquarters and process it. Let's just hope there's something left. <laughs> Natural causes. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Um, 
Maybe that's all we needed to do was get that. Did I look at everything or did I just investigate everything? I don't know if I looked at the blaster. Ah, it's been crushed flat. This would take incredible strength. So the gun has been destroyed. Let's look at the key. This item is quite an antique. Metal. Hang on to this key as evidence, okay? All right, I'll store it. And... I guess I need to look at everything. I, we've already seen that. Aha. There is evidence of a struggle on the ground here, but I can't interpret it. I think we're done here. Let's move. How can you advance? Where else are you going? He does kind of look like he's crying blood. Like, just blood came out of every orifice, right? All right. Now moving ahead. It's a dead end. Let's look at the front. It's blocked by a cave-in. We can't go any farther. Investigate the front. I don't see any way out from here. And let's investigate the dirt and sand. There's no way we could possibly move out this out of the way. And what about the motion detector here? Anything on your sensors? Nope, nothing. We're the only thing moving. How about if we listen? No sounds? Okay, let's retreat. All right, moving back. Maybe we in can investigate more here. I guess we investigate Gibson from here. Oh, it takes us back there. Never mind. Let's move back. Oh, that took me too far back. Move forward. I think it's, we're seeing all the same things we did when we were up close. Yeah, I don't think anything's changed. So I think we can leave this place, maybe. Yeah, that just takes us to the dead end still. Okay, so let's keep retreating until we're out of this place and we can report this to headquarters. Poor little guy. I, I can't take him or anything, can I? I guess we just got his memory chip and that's it. Okay, we're still retreating. Oh, I can only advance. Oh, we can exit. Okay, so let, yeah, let's go ahead and exit. Uh-oh. Let's keep checking the area, Gillian. There's something I missed. All right. What did we miss? I've already investigated everything here. I thought I checked out everything in every room. Maybe we need to go back up to where the body was. Love this music, though. Look at the ground. We already saw that. Look at the blaster. It says it's been flattened. Oh, this time it says Gene's blaster has been bent like a twig. How about the motion detector here? Are you picking up anything? Nope. I'm not getting any reading. And if we listen here, no sounds. We don't really have any items to use. Although we do have evidence. What is our evidence we can investigate? Key? So this part's new. There are no public facilities which still use keys like this. If that's true, then it must be to some personal item of Jean's. If we check his things, we may be able to discover something. So wait, am I supposed to go to his body again? Does he maybe have something locked on him? Let's go ahead and move forward again. Wait, that takes me here. No, I want to look at the body. Oh, here we go. I did it a second time. Now he says, look, Gene's holding something in his right hand. So grab it. There we go. Now we can look at the right hand. It's hair. He's holding several strands of hair. In addition, there is skin tissue from under his nails, probably from his scratching his attacker. 
So can I like get that? Skin sample or hair, let's do both. Now analyzing recovered hair sample. Nice. Analysis complete. Results on the display. One, chromosomal analysis of cells from the papilla and root reveal 46XY. Subject is male. Two, hair color, brown. Hair structure reading of 65 indicates European subject, wavy hair. Three, attachment of root structure and thickness of the base of the strand suggest hair was pulled out of follicle. Four, enzyme antibody analysis indicates subject is blood type A, RH factor negative. Five, cell component distribution indicates presence of artificial protein compounds. The results of the analysis strongly suggest that the strand of hair was pulled from the scalp of Jean's attacker during their struggle. This strand of hair almost certainly came from a male European blood type A negative snatcher. That's cool. So when we were looking at people's bios in the computer, you could look at the blood type. That's super interesting. So we're going to have to tie that to whoever we're looking for. Um, let's also look at the skin sample. Now analyzing recovered tissue sample. Analysis complete. Results on the display. One, enzyme antibody analysis indicates subject is blood type O, RH factor negative. Two, chromosomal analysis of cells in the sample reveal 46XX, subject is female. Three, oh. cell component distribution indicates presence of artificial protein compounds. Four, number of melanocytes in sample indicates that subject is Caucasian. The results of the analysis strongly suggest that the tissue sample, a cluster of skin cells, was scraped from the subject during a struggle with Joel. These skin cells almost certainly came from a female European blood type O negative snatcher. Now that's weird. That's a different blood type than the person with the hair. So were there two snatchers attacking him maybe? Seems like that. And you don't have to, you confess. That's your blood type, your hair color, and your European judge. Why you gotta kill Gibson? Apparently he's a pretty good guy. We're gonna come after you. <laughs> maybe there's more than one snatcher involved. Gibson said, I've cornered a probable male snatcher. Yeah, that's just what I was thinking. Two different blood types, then a female snatcher came as well. Okay, is there anything else here? Yeah, we looked at that blaster already. I guess we'll investigate Gibson one more time. Aha! Yeah, you gotta do it multiple times. Wait! There's a scrap of paper in one of his pockets. The search the house. And we have that key. I bet that's our clue. Scrap of paper. It's written on ordinary paper. I think we've I think we've done everything. No, it doesn't hear anything. I like that. It's uncomfortably quiet here. I think we might be ready to move out. Okay, so if we move ahead, still a dead end. Oh, wait, we can um, investigate our possessions, can't we? Might get more information from that. Oh, it doesn't show up there. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, he was wearing your coat only after you took off his head, Judge. You realized it was just the same color and makeup. What a coincidence. What a weird coincidence. Okay, I, I think we're going to try to get out of here now. And then we fully checked out the body. Although the game might tell us, like, you know, oh, we should get out of here. Maybe I haven't done everything yet. Let's check out little John again. Nope, I don't see anything that would help our investigation. Okay, so we don't have anything to do there. Before I go, let me just investigate the corpse a couple more times, because it could be even more than two times you have to do that. Okay, investigate Gibson. Corpse. Sir, huh? Yes. In addition, I read a substantial. 
substantial quantity of partially digested organic compounds. Organic compounds? If you can determine the composition and the degree to which the food's been digested, we may be able to figure out where Jean's been. <laughs> what did he have for lunch? It's super important. Maybe it is, but this is kind of funny. Okay, now this is what you're looking for. We've completely searched the body. I've recorded all the images. Or the ulcer must be the cause of <laughs> his stomach. His stomach got him. Darn it. Um, let's check out the hair again. We might get more information. Nope, I've already analyzed the hair sample. About the blaster. We've already seen that before. The organic compounds. Here we go. Now making incision in John's stomach Ooh, to analyze organic okay. compounds present. Analysis complete. Results on the display. Results of the analysis indicate the organic compounds are primarily composed proteins that have been exposed to digestive acids for approximately three hours. Amino acid structure of the protein suggests the meat is that of a buffalo. Ooh. Buffalo meat? Hmm. Yes, buffalo meat. The results indicate that Jean ate buffalo meat somewhere about three hours before he was killed. That's unique. Have you guys ever had buffalo? I think I have. I don't know if I had buffalo or if I had bison. One of those. <laughs> I had one of those weird burgers. It was good. I prefer just beef in general. Yeah, let's see about those darn receipts. How you doing, monkey? Good to see you, dude. Happy Saturday. Okay, we should search John's personal belongings. Something may turn up. You're right. We might find some kind of clue. Oh, you hate to say it, but there's one last thing for inscription? Wait, what do you mean there's one last thing, monkey? And why do you hate to say it? Let's try the organic compounds again. Nope, already analyzed, okay. Let's go with scrap of paper again. Just says it's written on ordinary paper, we saw that. I think we're done investigating. Oh, that's cool. They actually have a YouTube channel, like officially set up to kind of coincide with the game lore. That's awesome. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, a blaster that's now a twig or was snapped like a twig. Okay, so now we can look at the thing. Uh, search the house. What is that supposed to mean? Who knows? These could be Gene's last words. Metal. Keep this as evidence, will you? All right, now storing paper scrap in my internal chamber. I think we finally finished everything here. Movement. Oh, crap. Break out your gun. There's two of them. Something just ran across that doorway. Snatchers? Unable to confirm. I suggest we investigate. Yeah, I'm totally going to save it right now just in case I get killed. Let's, uh... Investigate. Can't look anything around here. I guess we have to move forward first. All right, now moving ahead. Oh, it came out before the game did. Nice, monkey. Are they still adding stuff to it? Oh, this just goes to a dead end. A dead end? Then where did the snatchers go? Listen. It's uncomfortably quiet here. <laughs> What? <laughs> Are you okay, Gillian? That's weird. I was fine until a moment ago. Please stay quiet. What's wrong, Metal? Maybe it's a sensor defect, but I think I'm picking up a sound off in the distance. Can you hear it, Gillian? That's odd. Seems like my ears are going out on me. Maybe it's due to the change in air pressure. I hear like a light beeping sound. Can you guys hear it? I don't know if you can. It doesn't even seem to be picked up by the desktop audio, but I do hear a light beeping. I can't investigate anything. That's weird. I would have thought any sound would transfer over the stream, but it's really faint. Oh, that's true, monkey. Well, somebody else could take over that account, I suppose. 
let's um, try listening one more time. Listen, you can hear a sound like that of a timer. Yeah, just barely. Okay, let's retreat, I guess. Moving back. Now he says, wait, I can hear something. I can't hear a thing. Try turning up the volume on the TV. Oh, that's cool. This is totally Hideo Kojima, like tweaking stuff. Hold on. I don't want to. I'm going to try to memorize where the volume level of the stream is so you guys can hear it too. Right now it's set to negative 15 decibels. I'm going to crank this up to max. You guys hear that now? Now I see it registering on the game. So this is what would happen if you turned up your television, if you couldn't actually hear it with your ears. I have a separate volume so I could hear it right away. And I'm going to turn this down on the stream because that will destroy your eardrums if I let it continue at that rate. Yeah, very faint, very quiet. Yeah. OK, so um, I think we need to move back still. Let's retreat more. Yeah, it's cool. They're, they're not going crazy. They know there's something going on. OK, wait, I can hear something. And we keep saying I can't hear a thing. I can hear a thing. We're probably going to run into it as soon as we go back. Yeah, this game is super loud, Katamari. So yeah, I had to turn down my, des my desktop volume to negative 15 so that it doesn't overpower my voice. Retro games are like that, though. They kind of played a lot of their sound maximum volume. Most games I have it turn up a little bit. Let's retreat again. Quiet. There. Can you hear it? Hmm. I'm picking up something from the direction of Little John. I thought Little John's functions were totally dead. Okay, so now we should investigate Little John again. Let's look here. Aha! Oh, uh -huh. There is little time. Anything could happen. You should probably save frequently just to be safe. I'm saving right now. Move away. Retreat. Crap. Did I go quick enough? Press A button to draw your blaster. I know. I practiced enough. Okay. I got out. Bam. Is there going to be anything I shouldn't kill, or am I going to be killing everything? I don't think there's going to be any people showing up here. <laughs> this is so random. I love it. So are these things controlled by the Snatchers or something? Or is this unrelated? Yeah, I, they call them like insectoids or something? Oh, I missed one. Like I had one shot that hit nothing. The motion reading has vanished. <laughs> Arachnophobia. Yeah, they just want to scare people that don't like spiders. Keep moving. We have to leave. Exit. We're getting out of here. Sorry, I cannot go with you. What's wrong with you? Hurry it up. I am incapable of locomotion. What on earth are you blabbering about? Let's go. It's going to blow. What? Please save yourself. I am paralyzed with fear. Oh, I can't believe this stupid robot. Come on! Pick it up. It's like tiny. There we go. <laughs> oh, what an old classic song, Judge. That's awesome. Jeez, my ears are really ringing. That's because you left the volume turned up. Damn snatchers. There is no need for concern. I have stored all the information about the evidence and the area in my memory. We should return to Junker headquarters. That is really clever. They have you turn up the volume and then big loud explosions. <laughs> My ears are ringing. Luckily, I turned it down after that. We've returned to Junker headquarters. Ooh, that was some first day. Now entering the building. We've entered well, the lobby. Hello, Mika. Gillian, I heard about Jean. I'm sorry. I wish I could have done more. You performed your duties quite satisfactorily. That's right. It's not your fault, Gillian. Don't worry about it. 
By the way, the chief is waiting for you. This Wait. is the chief's office. Well, Seed, that was a pretty rough first assignment to draw. You made a great effort, though. I've studied the data transmitted back by Metal Gear, so I know all about what happened out there. It's too bad about Gibson. He was a great junker. Seed, I need you to take over for him. You're the only one I've got left who can battle this Snatcher menace. All right, it's all on us now. Yeah, Hideo Kojima's famous for breaking the fourth wall. Uh, Katamari, I love that. Metal Gear Solid did that quite a bit. Okay, let's ask him about the investigative procedure. What do we do next? Based on the analysis of the hair strands he was grasping and the skin tissue found under his nails, we're reasonably certain that at least one male and one female snatcher were involved in killing him. You've got to learn what he was up to. What was he after? What was he investigating when he was killed? To find that out, you should start by checking out the detective's room and then his home. Yeah, we got that note to say check out his house. And we have a key, too. Okay, let's ask him about Gibson. He must have learned something important about them, but he didn't tell me a thing. He never said anything unless he was absolutely sure of himself. And let's ask about Katrina. Oh wait, Katrina, that's his daughter, right? Oh, that sucks. Katrina's the real victim in this. I'll let her know what happened, but it had to be a great shock to her. Katrina, you mean that girl who's doing the modeling job? <laughs> yeah, and then I guess we'll eat some buffalo, <laughs> I suppose. That's what he was doing before he got killed. Um, we've already kind of looked and investigated everything. I don't know if there's any reason to do that again. We can show him the evidence we collected. A scrap of paper. So, what was Gibson trying to tell us? And we could show him the key. What's that junk? <laughs> we don't actually have a conversation with him. He just kind of says, I don't know what that is. And that's all. Okay, I think we're ready to go to his office and then maybe his home. So let's go to detective's room. All right, let's check out Gibson's room. This is the detective's room. We should investigate Gene's personal items. We must learn what he was doing before he was killed. I see. Basic detective work. Okay, let's look at... I don't think we ever looked at the locker before, but the near desk. I think that's his. It's an antique steel desk. This is the one Gene was using. We probably should take a look inside, huh? And the locker? This is the locker that Gene was using. So his personal things should be in there, right? So let's investigate those. It's an old style working desk. It has drawers installed. To do it. Oh, now we can investigate the drawer. I'm afraid it's locked. I cannot open it. A key? Nobody uses keys anymore. As I recall, Gene had a key. That's right. So do I, can I like use E? There we go. All right, I will try to find the key. There we go. There is something in the drawer. Capsules. And a disc. Sweet. Uh, investigate disc. It's a five inch floppy disc. 5-inch disc. Nobody uses those things anymore. What's so funny is like you have keys that we use all the time still, and then a floppy disk that hasn't been used in over 20 years, you know? <laughs> it's like very different things. They just treat them all as ancient. And a blue pill. The Matrix just went deeper. I'm excited to see that movie too, although luckily that one's coming out to HBO Max, so that'll be a little bit easier to watch. Doesn't that just come out like later this week, I think, or next week, I guess. And let's also investigate. We should probably investigate the disc again. Sometimes you need to do it more than once. That's the same thing. Okay, let's investigate the capsule. What kind of medicine is this? I'll perform an analysis. 
acid inhibitors, membrane protecting agents, H2 blockers. This is medication for an ulcer. Jeez, it looks like Jean's stomach was really in terrible shape. Then what was he doing eating buffalo? That seems a little unusual. Perhaps there was some reason that he had to eat buffalo. <laughs> what? You better eat buffalo or kill you. <laughs> Just seems like he had a bad diet. Um, let's investigate the drawer one more time. We already investigated the drawer. Okay, nothing new in there. How about the locker? All right, let's investigate the locker. There is a coat hanging inside the locker. Let's investigate the coat. Check the pockets of the coat for me, will you? All right. A chess piece was in the coat. Oh, interesting. How about one more time? There is nothing else in the coat. Okay, let's investigate that chess piece. It's a chess piece made of wood. Make sure there's nothing else about it. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes just gotta eat buffalo. I, I swear I've had like a buffalo burger somewhere before, or bison. Uh, they, cause they're different, but they're like very similar, like in the same family or something. Maybe I had a bison burger. Okay, there's nothing else to investigate there. Um, Maybe let's investigate the desk again. There's only one drawer. Okay, so nothing else with that. Investigate the capsule again. We already analyzed it. I think we might have investigated everything. Oh, nothing in the locker besides the coat. Okay. And looking has the same options. I wonder if it's even worth looking at something if you already investigated it. What if we look at the chess piece? It's a chess piece. This could mean something metal. Let's hang on to it as evidence. Maybe I have to look at it for him to put it in, into evidence. Pretty sure it must mean something. Okay, let's also look at the locker. This is the locker that Gene was using. Let's look at the capsule. It's the stomach medication that Gene was taking. These capsules may have something to do with all of this. Let's keep them. That will not be necessary. I have recorded the results of the analysis of their chemical composition. That works. Oh, and we got a queen. There we go. <laughs> Good piece to win a match with. Let's look at um, the disc. It's a floppy disc for a personal computer. This disc must have something to do with Gene's investigation. All right, I will store this disc as evidence. I wonder if we can use it in the computer downstairs. Um, there's a keyhole in the front of the desk. We knew that. What about the near desk? I already looked at that. I think that's everything here. So let's, uh, nothing much else we can do with Metal Gear. Let's move out of here. Let's go to the computer room. See if we can use that disc. I will close the door to the desk. Better shut the locker. Okay, so we're back in the computer room. If there's any information you wish to study, you can look it up using the Jordan system. What about using the computer? Can we... Possession... Can't use there. Let's try accessing the computer and see if it gives us a option to use the disk. I am Jordan Junker, Headquarters Host AI Computer System. Please insert your ID card. We can use our card to gain access. What sort of information do you need? We might only be able to look up facts and look up people. What was our guy's name again? Uh, Gibson? Maybe we should load his AI file. Jordan ID file. Use the cursor to input the name of the person you are searching for. Well, let's try. Let's try Gibson. Now there might be more than one Gibson, so this might not work. Ah, oh, we got it. Dean Jack Gibson, Runner Junker Agency. 
age 55, height 185 centimeters, weight 78 kilograms, O positive, family, wife, Alice, deceased, daughter, Katrina, age 18, officer in police science division, since 2015, wife killed by snatcher in bioroid panic of 2046, requests and is granted transfer to Junker Agency. December 2047, in the line of duty while pursuing a suspected snatcher. Wow, they got that thing updated very quickly, right? <laughs> Okay, we probably don't need to use anything else here for now. Thank you for using Jordan. That's how I've been doing the voice in my head. Okay. Don't think you can, like, save it or anything. I'm going to click out real quick. I need to take a quick restroom break. So let me do a quick save. If I click out, luckily it goes quiet, which is nice. I'm going to let you guys do a quick battle royale. So if you can, go ahead and type exclamation, or actually type anything in chat. You don't have to actually say anything specifically. Just say anything in chat. If you haven't said anything in 10 minutes, your little character on the bottom disappears. So if you just say present here or anything, your little butt guy will appear. And then uh, we can get this battle royale started and I'll take a quick restroom break. Artho, what's up Artho, how you doing? Are you familiar with Snatcher? Have you played this before? <laughs> there you are Skywalker. Alrighty, give you guys another few seconds, and then I will be right back. John is about to murder us all. Well, it could happen. Sometimes I win these, and sometimes Robocadia wins these. But I hope you guys can get the token. Alrighty, I will be right back, guys. See you in just a moment. Nice, Artho. Good job. Did you get one of those healing items? Typically, it seems like whoever gets the healing item kind of dominates. You never know. You never know. <laughs> rigged. Rigged. We do have that rigged emote for a reason. Okay, before we jump back into the game, because I know some folks can't stay as late as the stream usually goes, I want to do a quick Christmas giveaway for you guys. There we go. Whoa, my camera was almost on the same exact spot in both scenes that's funny okay let me just get this underway real quick and then we'll jump back into the game so to join the giveaways on this stream this is going to be for a steam game it's super simple uh once i got this live all you'll have to do is type exclamation point ticket it costs five tokens which you all probably have and that'll put you in the running for a giveaway <laughs> all right it's so beautiful although it doesn't follow me. I have to try to stay in the center as much as I can, Judge. Okay, let me copy this over. Boom. And started. There we go. It has started. So to jump in this Steam game giveaway, go ahead and type exclamation point ticket in the chat and earn a chance to win a Steam game. I won't tell you what it is. I always keep it a secret. Um, I went with something with a retro style as we're playing a retro game right now. So I thought that was fitting. Now, this game has one of my favorite soundtracks in, like, any video game ever. I have not streamed this game, 
I did play through the entire thing off stream and I loved it, but it has such a great soundtrack. It's one of those soundtracks that if I was like trying to like own soundtracks on vinyl or something, I would probably pick this one up because it's just that good. And how do you check how many tickets you have? So this, you don't, this is like different than the tickets that, you know, we use for spending things. This is just specifically a giveaway ticket. Um, you can only buy one Skywalker. So I see you in the list right now, so you are good. But if you want to know how many tokens you have to purchase the tickets, just type exclamation point tokens in the chat and it'll tell you. You can also type exclamation point tokens and then somebody's name and it'll tell you how many they have. And I think I haven't played Evil Land, Judge, but I think I have that in my Steam library. I might even have Evil Land 2. Was there a sequel? I've heard that game goes through like different, like, I guess, generations of gaming as far as like the graphics are concerned, how it like starts like real retro and then gets more modern and more modern. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I haven't played it, but I've heard of that game. It looked pretty cool. Do you like that one? Yeah, like Relentless has 414 tokens right now. Yeah, yeah, you use tokens for these. And has all the game music. <laughs> nice, great soundtracks in that one too. So many of these games have such great soundtracks. 3,000 tokens, Skywalker. You are over three quarters of the way to requesting a game if you so desire. All right. Well, let's get this underway. All of you guys have a 25% chance to win. So I'm going to close the giveaway. I'll give you guys another few seconds. If you want to join this giveaway, just type exclamation point ticket in the chat. Take a quick drink while you guys are doing that, and then we'll end this. Katamari, you already have 800. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Close the giveaway. Going once, going twice, and closed. Rum roll, please. <laughs> Who is the winner of this giveaway? Bam. Captain Katamari. Everybody had a 25% chance to win. Congrats, dude. That is awesome. Here is the present. Mark that is. I need to move this thing off the on the screen somewhere else because it's like right in the middle of where that present is supposed to show up. Let me mark that as complete. There we go. And what did you win? Nice. Congratulations, Katamari. I just sent you a DM on Twitch, so you should have the key in your messages right now. Make sure you got that. And it's such a cool game. I highly recommend playing that one. It, it reminded me a lot of uh, like The Legend of Zelda as far as how it plays. And I just love the retro style. The soundtrack is so good. And it's not like incredibly long. I think you could probably beat it in maybe 10 hours or less or so, but it's so good. I really liked it. But congratulations, dude. That is awesome. So giveaway is closed. Let me jump back into the game real quick. Look in here. It should pop up any second. There it is. There we go. Of course, dude. Thank you for hanging out with us. Always like to give back to you guys, especially around Christmas time. We're getting close to uh, hitting like 100 games we have given away in this stream, which is awesome. All right, let me, uh, I need to update all the documents we have online. I've missed the last few giveaways. I have some documents if you ever want to go to, you can see from our Discord how many giveaways we've had, who has won, games that you guys have requested, all the games we've completed on stream, all those kind of lists. Okay, I don't think I can actually do anything with the disc here. What is ask? Oh, I guess if you want to ask the computer or ask how to use the computer. Let's see, I think we already... 
read this before. Yeah, we've seen that. Okay, so let's get out of here. And let's go to... We were at the detective's room. I think we want to go to the front and then exit out of this building and see if we can go to his house. I was thinking we would need the key for that, but I guess not. Oh! I'm all right now, Gillian. You can't stay depressed over these things forever. But that was quick! It just happened like hours ago or something. You're already no longer depressed? Dang, Mika. Old blooded. Um. <laughs> what the hell is this? Do something. Wait, what? <laughs> Do we have options to console her? smell her or persuade her? What is going on here? And Tin Demol, how are you doing, dude? Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for that follow. Yeah, it's probably a usual occurrence. That's true, Hussy, but they've got people getting killed all the time in this dystopian future, right? Let's try consoling her, even though she said she's already over it. Don't worry. I'm going to destroy the Snatchers. Yes, I believe you, Gillian. And now, we smell. It's a really great scent. If you keep this up, she will probably dislike you immensely. I may be leaning in that direction already. <laughs> oh good, if you're too much of a perv, she like just doesn't care about you. <laughs> what is persuade? We have to try these options. Ah, okay. So, how about a date tonight? I don't think we know each other well enough yet. Oh, come on. That doesn't matter. Isn't that the purpose of a date? To get to know somebody? Gillian, you may not know this, but there's a certain order in which things are supposed to happen. you really got a short temper, haven't you? Okay, um... Oh, we can ask her about that buffalo restaurant. Let's do that. Buffalo? I've never even heard of any places that serve that. Killian needs a heavy bonking, for sure. Um, ask about Gibson, who just died. Hmm, he was out of the office almost constantly. He kept mumbling something about, I've got those snatchers now, or something like that. You found something useful on Jean's desk, right? And let's also ask about Gibson's daughter. I feel so sorry for his daughter. She's all alone now. And 1980 fan club, welcome to the stream, dude. You're supposed to smell after the date, not before. That's the order of operations. Or, you, you, it's, it's not illegal to smell something that's around you. Just don't make mention of it. Keep it to yourself until the date or something. 100%, how you doing, dude? Welcome. Okay, let's, uh, that's everything we can ask about. Anything new to investigate? This is all the same stuff we saw before. I think we've done everything we can. Oh, thank you so much for the follow as well. I appreciate that, dude. Welcome. Uh, let's... Any possessions we can show her? Let's show her the evidence, even though she's like the front desk receptionist. Grab a paper that says search the house. That's where we're going to go to next. What's this? Are you going to buy a house? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's show her cash. I'm a very high class woman, you know. If you want to spend time with me, you better have a fat wallet. I'm out. I'm already out. I don't care about her anymore. She's a gold digger. Screw this. Let's show her our ID. I think we already did this before. So, what's that mean? That's funny. I imagine that it was written some way in Japanese and it totally got butchered into English. But maybe that's exactly what it said. I don't know. Um, okay, let's get out of here. Oh, I, how do I leave? It seems like I can only move to the rooms inside this building. already asked everything. Can we do a video phone now? Oh, we can. Okay. What does this do? 
All right, let's use the video phone. Who are we going to call? What number should I dial? Oh, crap. I don't know any numbers. 911. It's ringing. Hello, this is the Neo Kobe Police Department. Whoa! Gillian, you shouldn't call if you have no reason. Hello? Is something wrong? I'm breaking the connection. It's funny, we just prank call the police. Um, what's that like famous phone number that's in that song? Like eight six seven five three zero nine. Is is that the is that the song? I was going to say, I bet that he put some funny, like, fourth wall breaking Easter eggs in this game. But I, I can't remember the exact number. I thought that was it. Is that it? Eight, six, seven, wait, eight, six, seven, five, five, three, oh, nine. <laughs> yeah, Jenny, I got your number. Oh, crap. Not in the service. Number you have reached is not in service at this time. I don't Please think I check the number and dial again. This is a recording. JTNT Neo Kobe. I don't think you can dial seven numbers. I think I was only able to dial six. I did try 911, Judge. We basically prank called the police. We didn't talk to them. Okay, so the phone numbers are only going to be six numbers. All right, so I think I'm done talking to you. How do I get out of here? I guess we'll try to move. Maybe I have to ask somebody for permission to leave. If I could get to like the parking lot, we could leave. Or 411, like information, that would work. Okay, back to the chief's office. How is your investigation going? Any leads yet? Oh, I could probably show him the new stuff. Let's go to possessions, show, evidence. Let's show him the chess piece. A chess piece, eh? I've never played the game. That's right. Harry may know something. Oh, we should show the chess piece to Harry. Okay. Um, let's also show him the uh, disc that we found, I guess. Corn. <laughs> popcorn, Fairy Dew. What about popcorn? How are you doing, Fairy Dew? Welcome. If you can read that disc, it might provide you with some valuable information. Are you about to have popcorn, Fairy Dew? I love popcorn. I think we've shown him everything else. Oh, wasn't that a way to know the time? I don't I don't understand Fairy Dew. I think there's a reference going way above my head. So what was Gibson trying to tell us? I think we've already shown him those items. Okay, so in that case, oh, we can ask him about the Buffalo restaurant as well. Oh, that was a phone number. Very do. And it would tell you the time. I, I get I get what you mean, like a phone call thing. I thought you were talking about literally the word popcorn. <laughs> that would be really neat. I like that. That's an easy one to remember too. I don't remember that, but that's neat. Okay, a place which serves buffalo. Sorry, I can't help you on that one. But the analysis showed it had been about three hours since he ate it, so we know the place must have been within three hour travel radius of where he was, right? At least there's that. Um, anything else to ask? I think we already asked him about these other things. This is the first place we went to when we came here. So let's go and show the chess piece to this guy. Is he sleeping? This is engineering. Well, so our new junker has returned. I think he's a drunk. Yeah. I register high alcohol levels. Harry is intoxicated. Oh yeah, he is. I really, you know, I really thought you were better than that. <laughs> Harry, what kind of backup was that supposed to be? If you were a better junker than that, Jean, Jean wouldn't have had to die out there. Be the Harry, jerk. that statement is incorrect. Don't worry about it, Metal. Harry's right. Jean, 
sorry. It's... it's not your fault. <laughs> Metal, would you give Harry the memory chip we pulled out of Little John? Of course. Harry, this is Little John's memory chip. Soda Popsinski. That was the one of the boxers in Mike Tyson's Punch Out, right? <laughs> and he would always like hiccup during like the cutscenes when you chat with him. Let's uh, uh what should we do? We'll ask him. Uh oh. Would you leave me alone for now? I'm having a little farewell party for G. Can we show him things at least? Let's show him. Nope. Can't do that. Would you leave me alone? I'm not in the mood for that right now. I think I'm going to take a vacation for work for a while. Crap. I can't really do anything. Let's investigate Harry. Stop that. You wet behind the ears, know nothing. He seems to have been drinking heavily. Wait, it was the Nintendo game. So he was drinking soda pop, right? 1980? <laughs> so and so. <laughs> Nintendo was really big on censorship of a lot of stuff back then. Maybe we can't actually do anything here. I already looked at the picture. Yeah, he says, forget about work, Gillian. I just can't get in the mood for that kind of thing right now. So maybe we have to wait for another chapter or something for him to sober up. He has been drinking heavily. I register large concentrations of synthetic in the air. Or synthanol in the air here. Okay, well, I don't think we could do anything here. Let's go to... Shooting range? I think that's the only place I was here. <laughs> I remember there was a lot of games that, in Japan, they would be relatively uncensored, but when they came to America, they would take stuff out. Like, I think in, like, the original Castlevania games, they had, like, crosses and stuff, and they took that out. They didn't even want that around. And then, you, you, of course, famously, the blood in Mortal Kombat, they took out the blood in the Super Nintendo version, but the Genesis version had the gore and the fatalities, so it sold way better. That's right. Was that the Japanese name of that character? Vodka Drunk Drunkinsky? <laughs> That's ridiculous. I love that. I mean, it's not very sensitive, kind of a stereotype, but it's just funny. Okay, let's try moving to the shooting range. We're in the shooting range. You never know when you may have another shootout with Snatchers. You should make your practice in here part of your daily routine. Hey, I'm already a pretty good shot. That fight the other day with Insectors, their ability to not even begin to compare with that of Snatchers. I don't know, I thought I did pretty well. It wasn't like green judge, it was kind of like gray. Um, like almost like a grayish tan brown color. It looked more like sweat than it did blood. But even then there wasn't as much of it. Like when you would uppercut somebody in the Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat, there was kind of like a light spray in the air. And then in the Genesis version, after you use the code, it was like the arcade with these like huge, you know, buckets of liquid would fly out and then land on the ground and stay there for a second. So it was much more satisfying on the Genesis version. The Super Nintendo version looked better. Like the graphics were better, the colors were better, but most people preferred the Genesis version. I think it played better, like it was faster, and it had the gore. Oh, nice, Katamari. Thank you for the uh, reminder that it was working. Sweet. I'm glad to hear that. I hope you enjoy that game. I loved it. Um, should I do the practice? It seems like they want me to practice. Okay, the machine is set for the introductory level. All right, let's begin practice with the Junker's Eye system. Uh, take out my gun, that's right. It's generally pretty easy. You just have to move it. Oh, whoops. To whichever side you want. Never mind, this is a little bit harder than the last one. I spoke too soon. You have to give it just a second to register so you know you're not about to shoot a human in the face. Whoops, one fatality. What do you think? Perfect score. 
Hitting all the snatchers is wonderful, but you picked off a few civilians too. Only one? Only one civilian? Really? Did I? I have very good eyesight. You are getting very close. No wasted shots. All you need to do is avoid hitting civilians. Damn, I was so close. Don't worry. At this rate, you'll master it very soon. Yeah, if I'm still alive. Maybe I should do that one more time just to get the perfect score. I don't know if you have to to progress or not. And maybe you get harder levels as you do this. Maybe you can unlock something. Honestly, I probably have a better time doing this than I would on a regular Genesis controller because I'm using that Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. And this D-pad on here is really nice. Not that the D-pad on the original Genesis controller wasn't great, but it's like this kind of thing. And I feel like it works really well for this. Excellent. A perfect score. Well done, Gillian. Superb job. And you wasted no shots either. You're a fine marksman. I heard about your practice results from Mika, too. Really? What did you think of me now? Cool. All right. So now where should I, can I go? I want to, like, leave this place, but every time I go to the front, I go right back here. Um, yeah, I just want to find out how do I get to, like, my car so I can go investigate his house. We could do a video thing. <laughs> Katamari, I like that. Avoid hidden civilians. What kind of cops are these? <laughs> the future is so different, isn't it, Katamari? Oh, now I can go to the turbo cycle. I just have to move from this scene. My bad. Mika, I'm heading out to check on a few things. I've got a couple of leads. Really? Don't worry yourself over Jean, okay? Thanks, Mika. <laughs> Gillian? Yes, Mika? How are you and your wife doing? Oh, wait, that's me asking that. I think I mixed up the names. I think that's Mika talking to me. I haven't talked to her in a while. Not even on the video phone? No. You shouldn't leave her alone like that. That's right. Come to think of it, I have her number written down at home. Oh, so we can go home and then call her wife. Okay. I bet she's pretty lonely. I'm sure you're right. Thanks. Be careful, Gillian. I was thinking she had a horny reason for asking me that question. She actually had a very wholesome reason for asking me that question. We boarded the turbo cycle. Where would you like to go? So we can go to our house or we can go to Gibson's house. We're not like in a huge rush, I don't think. So let's go to our house first. All right, now heading to your apartment. Yeah, there is, like, no scenery when you're driving. It's just essentially a few lights passing by. We've arrived at your apartment. All right, let's uh, exit. check out our house. This is very similar to that old game I played called Rise of the Dragon. I never played this back in the day, but this, it does remind me a lot of that. This is your building, Gillian. We do have an amnesia, so I wonder how much of this we even remember. Wow, you mean I have a place to live, too? Please tone it down, Gillian. I know you've lost your memory, but isn't that carrying the act a bit too far? I like that. Oh, take care, Katamari. Thank you so much for the lurk, buddy. I appreciate that. Just trying to make things a little more fun for the folks playing the game. Oh, that's Gillian talking to us. Wow, we have a place to live? Once again, breaking the fourth wall. Let's see what you did there, game. Let's uh, look at the apartment building. This is the apartment that the government made available to you. Neighborhood's not much, but what a great looking building, eh? Not really. Let's look at the area. We're right on the border between the north and south regions of the city. 
it is not exactly where you would call the best neighborhood. Can't complain too much. Rent is really high, even around here. Gosh, it's just like where I'm at in California. Okay, let's investigate the building. It's a 20th century construction, but the building has been completely renovated. Yeah, but I still can hear my next door neighbors all the time. How do you know that? You've forgotten all this. Um, let's investigate the area. Being right at the dividing line between north and south regions, the population here is not particularly high. No convenience stores or delis in the area either. Shopping is really a pain. Okay, let's uh let's move in. Go inside. Oh, that's a neat little transition. That's cool. This is your living room. For a widower, the room seems rather tidy. I'm quite impressed. Wait, we're not a widower. <laughs> Just separated. That's not the same term as widower, right? That's if your spouse dies. Don't you ever shut up. Are you programmed to evaluate my personal life too? My duty is to support you and observe that you are properly carrying out your responsibilities as a junker. Some observer, you mean. Informer, right? Well, one can put it that way. Okay, let's uh, look around the room. There is nothing unusual. Everything is in its place. How can you know that? I was provided with complete data files on your apartment. And our shelf looks like we got a picture, a cuckoo clock or something, some booze. Alien, there's a photograph on the shelf. Yes, that's a very special picture for me. And the area. There is a single sofa bed. Overall, a rather spartan and bland room. Hey, I haven't had time to go shopping yet, all right? Oh, I mean, since we lost our memory, we just got seemingly kidnapped by this investigative group and already done a mission. But yeah, we've been pretty busy. Let's also look at the photo. It's a picture of Jamie. That's our ex-wife. Looks like she's at the Olympics. Ah, yes. The wife you are separated from. She is very attractive. Come to think of it. I wrote Jamie's video phone number on the back of the picture. So let's investigate. I probably have to investigate, but let's investigate everything. The room. No interest in women. That is most unfortunate. What? You shut up. I can't believe I'm hearing this from a robot. Let's investigate the area. There is nothing unusual here. In fact, it is downright dull. Of course it is. It's my apartment. I lead a very dreary life. <laughs> Dude, this robot's just tearing into us. Let's investigate the photo. Here we go. Yeah, so they are six digit numbers. There are some numbers written on the back. 39344. It seems to be a video phone number. Yes, that's a number for Jamie's apartment. Why don't you try giving her a call? Would you let me handle my own personal life? I wonder if I go to the phone if it's going to remember it for me or if I have to memorize it myself or check on it every time. Let's use the video phone. I've already forgotten that number. Ask metal number. What? <laughs> Maybe that, that'll do. Okay, good. You can bring it up. Ask metal number. Interesting terminology. Oh, Metal Gear. Metal Gear. We're asking Metal Gear for a number. Okay. Um, metal. Could you give me Jamie's video phone number again? Sure. It is 393444. Okay. 393444. And then three fours. Sometimes I'm pretty dense for Lilith. <laughs> Hi, Jamie speaking. Oh, Gillian, how are you? She doesn't look too lonely and depressed. She looks like she's doing all right. She's thriving without us. <laughs> let's just hang up on her. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk about our feelings. Jamie, I'm not sure how to say this, but I really want to make up with you. 
I want to try again. Please don't say that, Gillian. Right now, I think the two of us are better off apart. I'm sure of it. Burn! We just got rejected. Let's ask her about the job. Looks like this junker business is more dangerous than I thought it would be. Gillian? But it's still not as bad as boot camp. I'm a lot more relaxed working like this as a junker. Aren't you pushing yourself too hard? Well, it's pretty scary sometimes. Yeah, we just saw our partner beheaded. But now I've got a definitive goal, something to live for. I was really surprised when you, I heard you'd become a junker. I'm sorry. It was really hard for me to try to tell you. It seemed like it was very abrupt. They're just hanging out on a rooftop. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm a junker, bye. Flies away. That's all right. Besides, we live near each other. We can meet any time. Call me if anything comes up, okay? All right. I got mixed up those names. Um, let's go to ask her about Snatchers. Jamie, you should probably stay indoors at night. That's when Snatchers are most active. It's dangerous. I'll be fine, Gillian. Why would they ever want to go after me? They only want VIPs, right? Okay, let's ask her. It's interesting that they like mix those things up. You got talk and ask, you know? Let's ask her about her condition. So how are you doing? I'm getting by all right. How about you, Gillian? Are you eating properly? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I miss your great paschetti though. Paschetti? We haven't eaten anything. What do you mean you're doing all right? Paschetti? Oh, that's cute. You still call it that? Let's ask about work. How's your job going, Jamie? Are you still working at Kobe Pharmaceuticals? Yes, this work really suits me. I almost feel like I've been doing it for years because she lost her memory as well, remember? Uh, let's ask her about that. Any sign your memory may be coming back? I'm afraid not. I can't remember anything about living together with you or having fun together. What about you, Gillian? It's the same for me. I can't remember anything from before I woke up in that bed in the army hospital. Weird that they both lost it at the same time. Okay, weird guess at the twist ending to this game. They've both already been killed by Snatchers and we are now the Snatchers with no prior memory. Has anything funny happened to you lately? Gillian, if I was a Snatcher, could you kill me? Why are you asking me questions like that? Well, I don't know. I really don't. I've always liked that part of your personality. But Gillian, be careful. It could get you killed in that job you're doing. <laughs> yeah, we should have some fun with her now, Judge. <laughs> Maybe it'll jog our memories. Yeah, it went from, so how you doing, to could you kill me if you had to, Gillian? We could ask her on a date. Wait, I think there might be something else to ask. Oh, destination. Let's do that. Jamie, where are you headed? Oh, I just have an appointment with someone. A man? Why do you want to know? Well, you know, I just like to keep tabs on you, creepy. You jealous? Ah, that's it. You're jealous, aren't you? pick on me like that. Sorry, and don't worry about anything. I'm just going for my regular examination. What, your memory recovery treatments? That's right, Dr. You-Know-Who. Did they call it that because they don't know the doctor's name? So that's it, huh? Well, that old guy definitely doesn't give me anything to worry about. I don't know about that. These days I find myself attracted to senior citizens. <laughs> the humor in this game. Oh, really? Well, then I guess I'll have to try again after I've gotten a little older, huh? Nothing else to do that. <laughs> Not a serious doctor. Uh, let's ask out on a date. Sure. What do we got to lose? Oh. 
Huh. You get to choose what you should go do. Let's ask her out on a date for a meal. She was already asking about food. And if we're eating okay. Come on, Jamie. Talk to me a bit. Over dinner or something? We haven't been out in so long. I'm sorry, Gillian. I just don't feel like doing that kind of thing yet. Okay, so maybe we can go on a date later. <laughs> Choose the arrow. I guess there's more options down there. Hotel and arcade. We gotta try the arcade. Why don't we head over to the Hoverland Arcade? It's a lot bigger than Mindwave, and there's a lot of couples there these days. I'll grab a cute stuffed animal for you with one of those super conducting cranes. I'm good friends with one of the employees over there. So I can always get prizes. I'm sorry, Gillian. I just don't feel like doing that kind of thing yet. Okay, we're gonna get that with whatever we say. Um, do anything we need to show her? Let's show our ex-wife all of this important police evidence. Scrap of paper. Search the house. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Good question. Um, show over the key. Wow, that's a real antique key, isn't it? I guess you never know what kind of insight a character might have. What about the chess piece? It's a chess piece. Brilliant. Brilliant, Jamie. And the disc? A floppy disc? Jeez, I haven't seen one of those in ages. I think that's pretty much it. A show her all this money, huh? So they actually pay you? That's a relief. Okay, let's, uh, I think we've already asked and talked about everything. I think we're done. Jamie, it was good talking to you. Take care. Bye. Talk to you later, Gillian. Bye. Okay, so now we're back at our house. Let's see what else we can explore. I think we already investigated everything. We got the number from the photo. Let's move around our apartment. Let's go to the bathroom. We are in the bathroom. Let's look around the room. It appears to be a standard bathroom. A low cost energy conserving unit type sink and a shower has been installed. Low cost? Well, excuse me. Look at the sink. There is a bottle of perfume and a razor. Um, let's look at the perfume. It's Jamie's favorite perfume. It's almost as if her scent still lingers in the air. She'll be back someday. I promise you. I could live with Jamie. I suppose I could put up with being your navigator for a while longer. <laughs> I like Metal Gear. He's so sassy. Metal, you've got good taste in women. Yes, it is the first thing we've agreed on anything. The first time we've agreed on anything. Perhaps. Of course, my taste in women was programmed from your personal data. If that's true, then you should understand what I'm going through right now. What's wrong, Metal? I just couldn't help but be overcome by how miserable your life is. Well, f*** you, Metal Gear. Jeez, you and I are definitely not on the same wavelength. Okay, let's also look at the razor. It's the latest micro laser feather. Okay. Feather type razor? Gillian, why don't you try shaving? Okay, let's investigate around the room. There is a separate shower next to the bathtub. Wait, I think there was something else I didn't look at. I don't think we looked at bathroom itself. This toilet has the latest health pot, trademark, physical fitness analyzer installed. When you're taking a crap, it analyzes how healthy you are. Wow, I didn't even realize I had some of this stuff. I haven't lived here for very long, you know. Okay, investigate the sink. I see nothing out of the ordinary. The pipes aren't even clogged. Metal, would you stop being so bloody analytical all the time? I can't help it. After all, I am an analysis robot. Hey, okay, how about the perfume? 
Wait, I think I did the sink last time. Let's do the bathroom. No, I think we already did this. Oh no, now it tells us. When using the toilet, the system will measure and analyze your temperature, blood pressure, pulse, urine, and stool to create an instant profile of your current physical fitness level. What do you think, Gillian? Why don't you give Health Pot a try? I don't think I'd want to know that every time I took a dump. I wouldn't like that at all. Investigate the perfume. Ah, this is that famous Le Smell de, de l'Amour. Probably butchering that. That's right, it's Jamie's favorite. And investigate the razor. This will give you the closest, most comfortable shave a man can experience. God, you sound like an advertisement. I think that's everything. Let's do something. Use the bathroom. That's right. I've had to go for some time now. Uh, Metal, would you excuse me? Did you at least close the door? Ah, that's much better. How perfect would it have been if I timed my bathroom break with Gillian's bathroom break? I had no idea this was coming, or I could have. Gillian, according to the health pot system, you're exceptionally healthy. Good. I've still got quite a lot, or I've I still got a lot I want to do. I didn't expect that. Smell? We can smell the bathroom after we just took a dump? Oh, Jamie, does the scent remind you of her? Uh, no, nothing. Whoops, I got caught in a sentimental moment there. <laughs> yeah, Metal Gear is a solid friend. Well, he'll give us a sass when he needs to, but he'll also compliment us when he needs to, I suppose. Let's, uh, shave. Hey, I think I'll shave. <laughs> That's cool. Just sounds like a, any basic old razor sound. I love that. Feel better now, Gillian? Yeah, and more handsome, too. Now, there's... So, I don't... Here's a weird question. I've noticed this multiple times. I don't know if this is like a bug in the, the American Sega CD version of this game. If it's a bug with the emulation or what. But oftentimes, the name right here is not correct. Right now it says Jamie. That's our ex-wife. She's not talking right now. She's not here. I just keep trying to use the voice I think it's supposed to be. I think this is still Gillian talking. Now there's no way Jamie will be able to resist me. Of course, the punchline here comes when she does turn you down. Wait a minute. Maybe I should let my beard grow a bit. Look a bit scraggly and try to appeal to her motherly instincts. You will just get yourself into trouble. Okay, I think we've done everything. Um, yeah, I think we're done here. Okay, let's get out of the bathroom. We've done everything here. Okay, let's go to the other guy's apartment and check that out. So move, exit. Okay, now we move go to our turbo cycle. Okay, we boarded the turbo cycle. Where would you like to go? Let's go to Gibson's house. All right, now heading to Jean Jack Gibson's house. And it's cool seeing it like on that map on the left hand side. I wonder if that's always the same animation wherever you go. Be cool if it was like unique each time, but I doubt it. We've arrived at Jean Jack Gibson's house. All right, let's exit. Cool looking house. All oh, the lights are on. So could that be his daughter that still lives there? This is Gibson's house. Look around at the house. It is a rather nice looking early American type house. Look at the window. There is light coming from the windows. Look at the area. This is the northern part of the suburbs. There is quite a contrast between this and the southern district. So we live in the shit part of town 
He lives on the nice side. Okay, let's investigate else. The door on the front is the main entrance. There does not appear to be a doorbell. How about if we try knocking? Let's investigate the window. The windows are securely sealed. The glass appears to be of a reinforced type. And let's investigate the area. The roads and sidewalks are well maintained. Um, I think we're done, so let's go ahead and knock. Katrina, are you in there? Who is it? We should talk. You're Katrina, right? I'm a junker. I just started down... I just started down at the Junker headquarters. My name's Gillian Seed. I'm pretty sure the chief would have let her know. Really? Are you really a Junker? If you are, then show me some proof. Proof? Your Junker ID, of course. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our possessions. Show Junker ID. Well, it looks genuine for me. I can't trust you with just that. Tell me how old my father is. If you're a real Junker, you'd know that. Crap, I don't know the age. Do we? Maybe we do. We looked up his information. Hopefully he can recall it, because I don't remember. He's like 55 or something, wasn't he? I think he was in his 50s. Okay, Gibson's age. How old is my father? Oh, crap. Use the D-pad to input the numbers, and press Start button when you are finished. I'm going to take a guess. 54? It should be something like this. Oh, we're wrong. You don't have any idea, do you? If you're a real junker, try again. Hmm, <laughs> six. Nice. Okay, let's let's get out of here. Maybe we should try again later. Okay, I gotta go to the computer in the headquarters and check that out again. Junker HQ. And I'm gonna try to skip over like the repetitive dialogue that we read like a thousand times. Just as we go from place to place and stuff, obviously. It's really cold in the house. I think after this, we're probably going to watch like some Christmas movies, Andy and I, and wrap some presents. And I get to start our fire. We've been using our fireplace almost every night all week. Oh, that's a good question, Judge. I might have been able to use Metal Gear. I'm not sure. Oh no, Skywalker, your power just went out. That sucks, dude. Do you have like a big storm going through or is this just like completely out of the blue? Okay, well, well, we'll go in here anyway, but I'll double check Judge to see if we can use Metal Gear to give us that information. It would make sense. He's supposed to be just like a helper bot, right? How was your day, Gillian? Are you making any progress on your investigation? Okay, let's use Metal Gear. No, we can only video phone or save. And I think we, we can only get like information from him when we use a video phone. So, uh, I don't think there's anything else to ask. Let's move to the computer room. So it was raining Skywalker and it went out this morning for like five minutes. It hasn't rained in hours, but it went out again. I bet they're doing some work on something. Maybe the rain might have damaged something and now they have to take it down shortly to fix something. That's a bummer, dude. I hope you get it back quickly. Okay, so we can use the computer. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, Jordan Junker, headquarters host AI computer system. Please insert your ID card. We go ahead and do that. User confirmed as Gillian Seed. Welcome to Jordan. I bet that we're gonna find other ID cards Put them in here to get different information. And remember when people used to have a computer room in their house and that was where you use the computer? <laughs> they did, Relentless. What they had a big enough house to have a room just for a computer. Although honestly, this is kind of my computer room, if I have to be honest. I just have a futon for any guests that sleep over, TV, computer, desk, and a bunch of consoles. There's not much else in here besides game stuff. What sort of information do you need? Okay, let's uh, load ID file. And we are going to enter 
Gibson. Oops. There we go. It's like right around 50, between like 50 and 55, I think. Back the Gibson. I'm going to skip through most of this. I just want to get to the age. 55. Well, I guessed 54, didn't I? Oh, man. You know, first I randomly guessed 55, but I'm like, oh, it's too even. It's got to be something else. Bummer, man. Okay. Hope they're not going to ask me any of these other questions. Maybe I should remember some of these. Wife was killed in 2046. Graduated in 2015. This might be useful numbers. Okay, let's quit this. And we'll go back there and talk to the daughter. Okay, it is 55. And it was a big boom right when it went out, so it might be a transformer that blew. Oh, that makes sense. It sucks, Skywalker. I've had that where, like, I don't have power, and maybe a few of my immediate neighbors don't have power, but other houses I can see from my house do have power. And I'm like, why the heck us? That sucks. But usually when it's like that, it doesn't last very long. It's not a huge outage that they have to replace equipment or anything. Okay, let's move. And we're going to go front. I'm getting the navigation down a little bit better. Hey, Gillian, how's the investigation going? I'm not even going to answer you. We're just going to leave. Enter the turbo cycle. See you later, Gillian. Go back to Gibson's house. <laughs> I hope the Transformer that blew is Omnicron. He turned to evil. I have been hearing so many wild stories online about places shutting down and just the Omicron numbers being so bad. Oh, it sucks. It does seem that it's not as dangerous as the other strands, though. It's just way more transmissible, I guess. OK, let's exit. OK, back to Gibson's house. It's a knock on the door again. Rena, are you in there? It's you, eh? If you're a real junker, then answer a few questions for me. Oh crap, I should have memorized all of that. And you went into lockdown for Christmas today? Oh, judge. So what does your lockdown entail? What What is restricted? Like how, how much of a lockdown is it? Can you only go to like grocery stores and that's it or what? So two guests allowed, but four for Christmas. Oh, so they're restricting like what you can do in your households too, not just like public facility stuff. Where are you again, Judge? I'm curious. If you don't mind saying. Okay, let's uh, talk. You're Katrina, right? I'm a Junker. I just started down at the Junker headquarters. My name's Gillian Seed. I won't believe you unless I can see some proof you are who you say you are. Oh yeah, we have to show, I guess we have to do this whole thing over again. Show our card. That's not enough. Answer the question. Oh, I guess I could have done that straight away. Gibson's age. How old is my father? All right, he is 55. Uh, 55 years old. That's right. That's still not enough to trust you. I'm going to ask you about something about myself. Okay. Answer the question. About Katrina. What is with all these questions? She knows that, as a Junker, you should have access to Alpha-1. You saw her data on Jordan, didn't you? She's a very smart girl. I have a unique mark on my body. What type of mark is it? Was it a heart? I think it was a heart. She had like a tattoo of a heart that everyone didn't like, like this. <laughs> hey, we know this. I think it was a heart. You have no idea on the public stuff, Judge? Uh, you're from South Holland in the Netherlands. Oh, right on. What time is it where you're at? Heart shaped birthmark. Oh, not tattoo, birthmark. That's right. But I'm guessing it's, it's tricky because it's asking me exact text. Like, does it want heart shaped birthmark? Does it just want heart? Does it want birthmark? Does it want 
I'm hoping just heart. I'm going to try that. It might take multiple answers, too, as long as whatever keyword they're looking for is contained in there. Actually, we couldn't even fit birthmark in there if we wanted to. It's too long. How's this? It's got to be it. What? Wrong answer. Ah, oh, dang. If you were a real junker, try again. And it's half past midnight. Oh, it's getting late for you, Judge. Dang, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon for me. Okay, answer question. Uh, Katrina. Maybe it's just birthmark. Because I can't put heart-shaped birthmark. Let's just put birthmark. Over here. Oh yeah, what was the question exactly, Relentless? Maybe I'm not thinking that deeply. She said, what type of mark? Maybe birthmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus like tattoo or a different kind of mark. Burn mark, I guess. That's easy. A birthmark. There we go. That's right. Now, tell me the shape of that birthmark. Okay, I went, I, I jumped ahead in the questions. Now we know it's heart. There we go. And Skywalker, if it wasn't for COVID, it would be a perfect time to go see Spider-Man. I know, I want to see it so bad, but with COVID so bad right now, Skywalker, I'll probably still see it in like a week or two, but I'll go like probably to an early showing when there's going to be nobody in the theater, like the very first showing during the day. After like it's died down a little bit, you know? <laughs> Maybe just birth. <laughs> Heart-shaped. Hmm, okay, that's right. And finally, where is this birthmark located? Ah, oh, crap! Leg? Was it on her leg? Thigh, okay. More specifically, thigh. Thank you, Relentless. I did not want to go back there. I know that one. On your inner thigh. Nice job. Well, that's pretty embarrassing, but at least I know you're the real thing. Wait a minute. I'll open the door. I'm very sorry about all of that. I'm Katrina Gibson, Sean's daughter. I'm... I'm so sorry. What's the matter, Mr. Steed? I'm very sorry, Katrina. It's my fault your father's dead. Gillian. No, if I could have gotten there just a little sooner, your father might still be alive. Oh, Mr. Seed, I appreciate your feelings, but I was always ready for the worst with my father. Every day as I watched him leave for work, will it be today, tomorrow, I knew it was a dangerous job. Katrina, that's... Well, I'm a junker's daughter. Do you think you'll be all right by yourself? I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Besides, I don't think I have any tears left. Katrina, are you sure? Okay, Junker, you've got work to do, right? Keep yourself busy. That's the best way to take your mind off of it. Okay, Katrina, you're probably right. I'll appreciate any help you can give me on this investigation. I like how they changed the profile as she was talking. That's really cool. I like those little talking heads. And now does she remember when she showed you her birthmark? <laughs> well, we just know it from the computer, Judge. <laughs> and you remember because there was a note on her not wanting people to see it. And you're like, how many people have seen it in the first place? That's a good question. And it's in the computer, right? OK, let's look around. Uh, although hopefully that's not on their Internet, too. Maybe just our police computer. I don't know. Maybe the dad put that information in there. Okay, let's look at Katrina. Hmm. Abundant natural resources. No wonder she's working as a model. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that terminology. Abundant natural resources. Yeah, bonk. Monty Python had my old favorite terminology for that. They used to call it vast tracts of land. But abundant natural resources. I like that too. Very bonkable offense. 
Alien, please restrain yourself. Yeah, good. Um, okay, let's look at around the room. There are antiques everywhere. Is, it, is this why this game is so widely regarded? Just constant horniness? And the furniture? All of these are quite impressive pieces. Our house is full of this stuff. Our dad kept buying things long after we were out of places to put them. Sounds like me. All right, I think we've looked at everything. Let's go to investigate around the room. He has paid a lot of attention to the decor and layout of the place. Pretty stupid since they were only two of us here, huh? And the furniture. None of these items are replicas. They're all genuine antiques. That's impressive. None of this stuff is really valuable. He said it was all used. Yeah, rich in mineral deposits? Okay, let's ask her about Gibson, her dad. I didn't really talk much with my dad lately. He was always so busy investigating stuff, cooped up in that study. That's where we gotta go, is a study. <laughs> nice, relentless. <laughs> I mean, now it's a valid question. It's like, I've, I've heard so many things about this game on watching YouTubers talk about retro games and some of the best. Now I've seen why everybody likes this game. Okay. Ask about herself. Me? Well, I'm just a spoiled brat who never cared about her parents. Wow, such honesty. And how about a buffalo restaurant? Do you know of any places that serve buffalo? We found buffalo in your dad's stomach. Buffalo? We never had that here. Gross. Buffalo? I never eat that. And let's do so. Oh no. Oh no. What kind of creepy ass things is Gillian going to try to do now? Console? Wipe away tears? Persuade probably means ask her out on a date. Probably. Let's try, to, let's try to consult her. Although she she seems like she couldn't care at all. Katrina, I'm sure all of this is quite a shock for you. Don't worry. I'm here for you anytime. You can lean on me. Oh, Gillian, spare us, please. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. You're a really nice man, Gillian. I love how the, even our robot is like, dude, come on. Okay, let's wipe away her tears. Here. Let me wipe away your tears. Gillian, I saw you blow your nose into that handkerchief. Hey! Metal Gear, shut your mouth. Shut up. Damn. Hope she doesn't notice. Thanks, Gillian. <laughs> it's only after your natural resources. <laughs> this game. Okay, persuade. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. Are you busy tonight, Katrina? Why don't we go out? I could think of a hundred reasons why not. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, good, good. I, w I wonder if we ruin our chances for like later stuff by being so not smooth. I hope so. So funny. Okay, let's uh, show her some evidence from her dead dad. Here's a scrap of paper your dad had. That's my dad's handwriting. He was always leaving memos all over the place. Let's show key. I wish it would kind of keep my menu where it was. It's like a quality of life thing, but when I show the scrap of paper, once that's done, I wish it would come back here, you know? <laughs> nice relentless. You're quick on that. <laughs> I wish it would come back to this menu versus me having to go four or five levels deep to get back to this section. I'll show her the key. I wonder if that's my dad's. I think so. It was the key to your father's desk. Oh my, nobody uses keys like that anymore. And Drifty the Kid, how are you doing, dude? Welcome to the stream. You're a huge Sega fan, but you don't think you've ever come across this one. I've never played this one myself. I had a Genesis. I had a Sega CD as a kid. I also had a 32X, but I never did play Snatcher. And it's highly regarded as like one of the best Sega CD games. Actually, if you were to look it up on eBay, it's super expensive. Not just because it's rare, but it's also pretty sought after. How you doing, dude? Good to see you. 
Um, let's see. Let's. Uh, we're still showing her stuff. Let's go ahead and show her the chess piece. Maybe she can make some heads or tails of it. Wow, this is my dad's. Where did you find it? Why can't we con continue that conversation? She knows about it. I want to know more, too. And Sega CD is a good way to get you to click on your stream. <laughs> nice. Did you have a Sega CD as a kid as well? I haven't tried mine in a long time, the actual physical one. I'm not playing this on original hardware, but uh, it's in my garage plugged into the TV. I think I'm missing a video cable from my 32X to the Genesis, though. Possibly. I'm, I'm missing something there. I know when I tried a 32X game last, it didn't work. I'm hoping the Sega CD works, though. Oh, nice. You're 21, but you fell in love with it later in life. It was such a cool time. When I first played the Sega CD when I was a kid, we rented it from Blockbuster back when that was a thing. They would actually let you rent consoles out. And for, I think it's usually like 20 bucks or something, you would get the console and you could get like two games with it, which was a pretty good deal, honestly. And I mean, it was probably maybe 10 bucks more than renting just the games by themselves. And I rented the Sega CD multiple times. And I think it wasn't just the Sega CD. I think they gave you the Genesis and everything hooked up as well. And uh, I never did rent Snatcher, but I did rent this game called Rise of the Dragon, which is actually very similar to this. I think that one came out later. Uh, let's ask her about the disc. Disc. It looks like the ones my dad always used on the PC-68. I think that's like PC-6800. I think that's like a common computer in Japan. 68,000, something like that. We're going to have to use that computer, I suppose. And Weird Judge, it was five bucks for a game here, although different coins are not comparable. That's true. <laughs> it could be way more expensive or way cheaper, per, per chance. Although if they rented games now, it'd probably be like 10 bucks for a rental because of inflation and everything. Um, Let's see. Yeah, because when I used to work at Blockbuster, when I first started, I think it was five bucks to rent a game. And then later on, it was like seven or eight bucks. Um, I think we've already shown her all that. I think we've done everything. Let's see if we can move around this place. Let's go to the study. Maybe we can access the computer. And you had a Genesis as a kid? As a hand-me-down? Of a hand-me-down? Of a hand-me-down? <laughs> and you only owned Sonic 2 and Golden Axe. Great games, though. Those are great. Solid games, but now you own every Sega Genesis console besides the Nomad and Game Gear. That's awesome, dude. Which is your favorite of all of them? I actually have a very special spot in my heart for my Sega Saturn. Because as a kid, when new consoles were coming out back then, they were huge upgrades over the old ones. Now, if I was to look at like a video game magazine and you showed me a PlayStation 4 game and a PlayStation 5 game, mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you the difference, even if they were like full pictures, like taking up an entire page of the magazine. I couldn't tell you which was which. But back then, the jumps between consoles was huge. And going to like the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation, that was like the first like 3D we were really getting in console games. And that was so exciting to me. I loved it so very much. Oh, the Dreamcast. That is a great one. I loved my Dreamcast. And the VMUs were so interesting. Like a video, it's like a memory card that's also a Game Boy. <laughs> like what? They had some neat stuff with that. And people would just go for online subscriptions instead. That is true, Judge. That's very true. And Cheesecake, what's up going on, dude? The best video game era. Wait, which one? The Dreamcast or Sega Saturn Cheesecake or Sega CD, where we're at right now. You know, it's really funny. Oh, Drifty, thank you so much for the follow. Um, whenever I think back on older generations of games, um, the Atari and like the PlayStation Sega Saturn are very similar. Like Atari was like the first 2D graphics, looks really chunky, very ugly, kind of hard to get your head around. I think the PlayStation and N64 and Sega Saturn are the same thing for 3D games. And then the NES trumped the Atari hugely. You had cool looking characters that started to look nice. Same thing with PS2. The PS2 and the NES are kind of that next generation of that type of graphics. And then when you hit the Super Nintendo, which was kind of like the apex of 2D gaming, honestly, the, the Super Nintendo games still look great. Um, that's kind of like getting the PS3. And now you're doing HD. Games don't look a whole lot different 
from like PS3. Yeah, they are, they're definitely better, but I think like PS3 games, the best of them, still hold up really well. And the PS5 games have a white line on the top. Yeah, that's the big difference, right, Judge? <laughs> and PlayStation 5 games are $10 more. There's that too. And the Super Nintendo was great and all, but the technology jump between Super Nintendo and PS1 was mind-blowing. That is very true, Cheese Click. That, that all the generations back then were huge. But honestly, if I was to look at, like, uh, you know, Final Fantasy VI and then Final Fantasy VII, most people would say Final Fantasy VI holds up better based on what they were trying to do. You know, just like Super Nintendo games are very aesthetically pleasing because it's like really good looking pixel art. Modern day indie games that have pixel art kind of look like Super Nintendo games. People don't make graphics like Final Fantasy VII anymore. <laughs> very chunky. <laughs> it was very different, you know? It was technically better, but aesthetically, maybe not better. But it's they were just doing something new. Okay, so we're in the study now. Does she follow us here? It looks like. Oh, we're trying to go there right now. Uh, do you mind if I take a look in your study? Go ahead. And you have to look at it with rose-colored glasses, though. Compare it, or cannot compare with modern sensibilities. <laughs> well, and that's the thing, though, is nostalgia is a huge drug. I loved how Super Nintendo games look. I still love that aesthetic, but I just think from a purely objective standpoint, I think 16-bit games generally look nicer on the eyes than a, uh, like, especially early 32-bit games. Of course, 32-bit systems could do, like, uh, 2D games fantastically, like Symphony of the Night looks better than anything on the Super Nintendo, of course. But as they were trying to tread new ground with 3D, there was some learning to do there for sure. Okay, this is Gibson's study. This is my dad's study. I haven't touched a thing. It's just the way he left it before he died. Perfect. Good. Don't touch it. Not that it's a scene of the crime, but we need to do some investigating. Okay, let's look at Katrina. <laughs> We're getting awkward again. Please, I'm used to being looked at, but it's always through a camera. Let's look at around the room. Everything's neat and tidy. Just like Jean. Wait, there's a personal computer here. That's what we need to put the disc. Let's look out the window. You can see the garden from here. A garden? Wow. His own house with a garden and everything. How nice. <laughs> yeah, we're... You, I'm sure that's going to be an option. <laughs> we have, we'll get there. We'll get there, Relentless. I'm scared to know what's going to happen. Yeah, but it faces north, and it's really quite small. Have you seen our apartment? This place is like a mansion. Uh, let's look at the computer. This is the model PC-68 Genesis. Ooh! I bet that's not what it said in the original version of the game. This wasn't a Sega CD game originally. I think it was on uh, one of those older uh, Japanese-only consoles. I forget which one. These must not have been manufactured for nearly 50 years. My father was always using it. Some junk shop gave it to him, and he fixed it up. And the chessboard. Hey, that's why we got that chess piece. It's a chess set. The pieces are very neatly arranged. My dad really liked Chets, but he always seemed disappointed because I couldn't play. <laughs> Famicom CD? No, it was like, um, it wasn't even like the Turbo Graphics, which was, maybe it was a Turbo Graphics. It was the PC Engine in Japan. I wonder if this first came out on the PC Engine, perhaps. <laughs> That's a good point, Judge. We gotta investigate that birthmark. Make sure she's not a snatcher. Okay, I think we've looked at everything. Now, do we investigate Katrina? No, we don't. Thank God. Okay. Investigate the window. It has a double locking mechanism. My dad was always really careful. Investigate the computer. It has a 5-inch disk drive installed. 5-inch, huh? Well then, that disk must be for this machine. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Let's try to see if we can read it. That was a weird pause, <laughs> just for that line. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't careful enough not to get killed. How are you going to go into a situation like that without backup? 
Apparently these snatchers could just rip your head off, so... Black Queen is missing. Yeah, we have it in our pocket. I see. The Queen is missing, eh? The design of this set matches that of the piece we found in Jean's coat. That piece I've got definitely goes to this set. So we could probably use it. Oh, Pro Jared didn't finish his playthrough of this game? Oh, that's a bummer, Cheesecake. I wonder what happened. I mean, was he just not that entertained? Or he just got to a point he's like, nah, not into it anymore. Or was this when all that crazy stuff happened to him? Oh, the viewer interest was low. Oh, that's a bummer, Cheesecake. Now, spoiler alert, I definitely don't play games that are necessarily the most popular, I suppose. I just kind of play what looks interesting, what has a good story and that interests me and we always play through it from beginning to end i don't think i've ever stopped on a game prematurely we've always finished pretty much every game we started on this stream but uh i usually do a little bit of research so i know i'm going to be into the game i don't just like grab something randomly okay let's ask her about her dad again oh dad and then she's crying i'm sorry i'm sure you didn't want to think about it <laughs> yeah so why'd you bring it up if I had known this was going to happen, I should have been nicer to him. You'd be nice to him anyway. Helian, you are the same way. You never know what might happen to yourself. You really should tell your wife how you feel. I tried. He's brushing me off. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I'm going to love it, Cheesecake. I mean, I grew up during this time. I actually played another old game called Rise of the Dragon. I played it on PC, but it was very similar to this. I love that game. I also rented it on Sega CD back in the day. And you've stopped on plenty of games, the PS4 losing all your save files midway through. Oh my gosh, Judge, when you lose a save file, that is crushing. I could see not finishing a game then. Um, but I, I definitely will stop games on my own if I'm not feeling it. But when I do a game for stream, I try to pick ones I know we can finish. Because I just it's nice to experience the entire thing with you guys. Okay, let's ask about her. I'd prefer uh, if nobody bothered me right now. Too late. I'm here. The Buffalo restaurant? We already asked her about that. Oh no, the poor buffalo. Aren't they almost extinct? And then... Let's ask her about the computer. This is my dad's personal computer. He sort of used it like a diary. Perfect. <laughs> nice. And the Sega CD was your baby? Your sister poured a glass of Pepsi on your Tower of Power, and you had the Sega CD, the under one, the 32X, and the Genesis. Oh no, that's terrible, Cheesecake. I have I have the Model 1 Genesis, but the Model 2 Sega CD, so I don't have the full Tower of Power, but it's like, you know, connects on the side, and um, it still works. I have a 32X as well, but I didn't own the Sega CD for a while. I did buy it when it was relevant, but not until it dropped in price. It was like, what, $300 initially? I think I got it when it dropped to like 200 or something like that. Yeah, I think we've asked her about everything. Let's do something. We can console her again. Come on, Katrina, you've got to pull through. Okay, Killian, if I need any advice, I will be sure to ask you. It's like, shut up, I'll ask you if I need help. Wipe away your tears again. I'll be okay, thanks. Okay, it's the same thing. So let's um use the disk in the computer. Let's see what's on this. Alright, let's turn this PC-68 on and see if we can read the disk. So, the house is in that search the house. Wait. So the house in that search the house was referring to Gibson's house. This is the note that we found earlier. That music. <laughs> and that exclamation point was not an exclamation point at all. It was a symbol for the five inch floppy disk. I did not make that association. I can see what he's talking about. Yeah, those old five inch floppies had that kind of design on the back where it read the disk. Look closely. The pattern matches the read write holes on the disk. He even drew the little dot to represent the index hole. In other words, it was meant to put the disc in the PC-68 at his house. No doubt Gene was worried that something might happen to him, so he prepared the disc for just such an emergency. 
You know, this kind of reminds of me of when we played that, um, what was it called? Like Ace Attorney game, the kind of kind of a visual novel almost, really. With shooting. The machine is reading the disc. Here it is. Snatcher investigation file. Why does Snatchers appear in the winter? Why are Snatchers nocturnal? I believe I have found the answer to these questions. Snatchers' vampire-like behavior is due to their desire to avoid exposure to sunlight. Hmm. The reason they dislike sunlight is because of their defective artificial skin. Oh. Long-term exposure to ultraviolet rays causes overproduction of melanocytes in the epidermis of their artificial skin, leading to a form of skin cancer with the characteristics of melanoma. Crap. In other words, what we call simple sunburn is fatal to them. I think I'm a snatcher, This relationship guys. between ultraviolet rays and their artificial skin should give us a way to track them down. It should take at least six more months before they can develop a form of skin which overcomes this defect. These conclusions suggest several useful methods for locating and identifying snatchers. One, investigate skin condition. Check for any evidence of melanoma. Two, check for odor. Cancer cells secrete a unique foul odor. Three, the presence of pollen. Snatchers are believed to hide in areas plentiful in Snow 9, a snow-like bioengineered pollen crystal. As such, Snow 9 can always be detected in places they appear. Snow 9 is an allergen, causing throat pain and sneezing. Four, possession of sunscreen. <laughs> it's me. In order to protect their skin from ultraviolet rays, snatchers use sunscreen even in the dead of winter. This is due to sunscreen's ability to block ultraviolet rays. Of these techniques, one in four should prove particularly useful. In addition, besides working to prevent this skin cancer, snatchers maintain facilities for treating artificial skin, which has actually become cancerous. I have succeeded in identifying the hospital where this is performed. P.S. Watch out for a bounty hunter named Random Hajil. That's an ominous statement at the end there. That's cool. So Cheesecake, I also wanted to ask, did you ever buy another Sega CD or after your baby, you know, was murdered by Pepsi? Did you never get another one? I may have killed Gibson, Judge. I may have. You know, the um, voice acting in this game is surprisingly solid for being, what was this game came out in 1994 or something? Voice acting in games used to be so bad. Like, this is way better than Resident Evil on the PlayStation, which, which came out much later. So that's it, eh? He found their weak point. And no doubt Gene was killed because they learned that he had found their hospital. <laughs> yeah. No one suspects the Spanish Inquisition, Judge. Is there anything else we can do here? I think we're done with that. Do I need to show anything? I thought maybe we could do something with the chest piece in here. Let's try to show it to her in here, see if anything happens. This is definitely my dad's. I have been looking for that chest piece. It was the only one missing from the board. So, so give it to her? I've already asked her about everything. Let me investigate that chest board again. The black clean is... I can't do anything with it, though. Okay. I think we're done here. I don't know if I can do much else. So he says, I believe it's the one that goes next to the king. It was taken from the chess set at Jean's house. What could it mean? Jean really liked puzzles. This must have been some secret meaning. So just the fact that it's a queen, I guess? I don't know. Maybe queen is the name of something. Like, uh, maybe it's the name of the buffalo restaurant we need to find. I think we're done here, though. 
let's go ahead and get out of here. Oh, wait, should we do a phone call? Oh, we can go to the backyard garden from here. Sweet. May I take a look at the garden? It's really small. There's nothing in it. Watch out for Alice, okay? Alice, like your dog? Maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a, it looks like a Doberman. I used to have a Doberman when I was a kid. Such a cool dog. This is the garden. Let's look around. Alice. Yep. The dog is a purebred Doberman Pinscher. It's the most popular breed in Neo Kobe, after Golden Retrievers. Guard dogs have become more popular since the Snatcher problem started, right? Yes. Until then, more cuddly breeds were more popular. You mean like... All of these designer gremlins? These creatures right here? <laughs> Terrible guard dogs. <laughs> They're not going to do much. Especially Jessie, she would try. Most they can do is bark for the most part. Although Gus, he's got a big head and really powerful chompers. He could probably do some damage, but he's so short. You can only tear out your, uh, your ankles. Oh, don't you love that Relentless? I was watching. If you want to see some cool video game reviews on YouTube, Look up action button. This guy has done like anywhere from like two to like six hour video reviews on games that you know, but they're just so entertaining. And he goes into so much detail and side stories and stuff. And I really enjoyed listening to them. But when he talks about his dog, he always calls it a designer gremlin. And I have to take that terminology because I love it so much. But yeah, check out action button. It's a really fun YouTube channel. Yeah, they just, that, they can at least do that judge. They can bark, wake us up. They just can't really protect us physically. Okay, so we looked at Alice. Let's look at the bush. I, I'm right here. The dog isn't even coming at me. He's a terrible guard dog. He's just staring at the bush. Someone has really been taking care of this place. There's nothing here. Let's look at the shadows. There aren't many street lights here. I can't really see much. I do not see anything unusual. Okay, let's investigate the dog. I really am not very good with dogs, you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm not a snatcher. When it was talking about, like, skin cancer, melanoma, it's like, that's me! I'm so pale, I have to watch out for the sun. I get burned so easily. <laughs> investigate the butch. Ouch! There's thorns in there. Those plants have been genetically altered to have razor-sharp thorns for use in security areas. They are frequently used in upper-class residential neighborhoods. Preventing crime with plants, eh? And let's investigate the shadows. It's so dark. I can barely see anything. I am not reading any motion. <laughs> that would make sense. They just, they used my skin as a basis. They, a terrible choice, Judge. Terrible choice. Um, I don't think there's anything else to do here, honestly. Unless we can investigate twice. What if I do the dog again? Dogs hate navigators. Please understand. But sometimes you do have to investigate something more than once to get more details. Uh, seems like everything's there. Okay, let's go back in the house. Oh, we can ask about the dog now. That's cool. Well, this is our dog. Dad named her after Mom. After she died. You saw her too, right, Gillian? Isn't she cute? And I don't know if I asked about the computer. I'm going to do that real quick. He said it's over 50 years old and that it's the only one like it left in the world. He always took good care of it. Wait a second. What? When does this game take place? Like 2046 or something? 50 years ago, so 1996? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a computer wouldn't have a five and a five and a half inch or five and a quarter inch floppy back then, but you could have an older computer that people might still be using that would have that then, for sure. Oh, a really slippy kitty wanting to go to bed soon, so sweet dreams. Oh, take, thank you so much, Judge. We're going to be wrapping up here in just a moment, so perfect timing. Thank you so much for joining us, though. Hope you can uh, drop in again on Tuesday. Oh, I can't believe my dad left a message like that. We might be done here completely. I'm not sure. 
and Hasifa Snatcher is set in the futuristic Neo Kobe City, the city of madness and decadence. The year is 2047, not 2042. Oh, in the original Japanese version, they upped it. Maybe because it was becoming closer to the present? <laughs> you know, with like the when they talk about the flashback stuff. Okay, let's go to the living room. And I think we're ready to get out of here. Let's move. Exit. Oh, do you have to leave already? Will you please come back again sometime? I'll be waiting for you. Let me give you my address and video phone number. Now give me a call if anything comes up. Thanks again, Mr. Seed. Take care. That's cool. I like it when their voice acting kicks in. Alrighty. I think we're ready to enter the turbo cycle. I think I'll leave it at the police station. We'll start back there. Or we just wrap things up. Okay, go to Junker HQ. I don't know what else we need to do besides probably give our evidence to the chief and stuff. Maybe that'll get us a new direction to go. I like it. It has all these controls and he never presses a single button. There we go. Is it the turbo cycle. I'm going to do two, two kind of saves, just to be sure. So we're in the reception area. How was your day, Killian? How's your investigation going? Learn anything new? So I want to hit F2 on my keyboard, which does a, like a quick save of the game. But I'm also going to use their save system. I don't know how that saves through emulation, but it also works. So let's do save here. All right, I'll save everything that has happened up until now. Which file number would you like to save it in? I'll just choose one, that's what we used before. This file contains data from a previous save. Is it okay for me to overwrite it with new data? Yes. Save completed, there we go. Now what happens if I hit finish? All right, that's enough for you now. Gillian, I hope we can continue the investigation together soon. That's cute. That was interesting. <laughs> Gave you a little song there. Does it go back to the main menu? It does. See, now if I press F4, it's going to go immediately back into the game where we left off, where I did the quick save. Bam. That's so nice. I love quick states with uh, these emulated games. Okay, well, let's exit there and we'll continue this game on Tuesday. We might, probably not, but we might be able to finish this game before vacation. I think that how long to beat was around eight to nine hours or so. So we'll see. We'll see. There's a lot of reading. Yeah, there's a weird jingle right there, right? That was interesting. But I'm really digging this game so far.